Hello everyone and welcome back to the GDQ Hotfix. Uh, you are tuned in to How to Trim Speedrunner and today we do have uh, two pretty awesome games. Uh, just before we get into that, I would like to remind everybody uh, we do have a new uh, YouTube channel, GDQ Some of Best Segments. Some is spelled S-U-M. Uh, it's a YouTube channel with highlights, just like our, uh, it uploads just like our main channel, uh, except instead of the larger videos, it'll be highlights. Uh, and you can find that at uh, in the description, and you can also. Or sorry, <laughs> I've been doing too many vods. <laughs> I've been doing too many YouTube vods. <laughs> um, you, you can uh, type exclamation uh, highlights in chat, and you can also uh, go to our website, uh, airgamesonquick.com, to find out more. Uh, also, AGQ 2022 online will be January 9th to 16th. You can visit gamesandquick.com for more information and details on the event there. Uh, but we are uh, here with Jebby Levy and Sundered. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty all right tonight. Uh, did a, done just a little bit of practice. I got a little bit rusty since last year. But I'm looking pretty good to start today. Alrighty, are we good Excellent. to go? Excellent. Do you have anything you uh, about the run uh, you want to say before we start, or do you want to just get right into it? Uh, no, not before we start. We've got like a little bit of downtime like right at the beginning here, so I think that's just a good time to start. Perfect. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So what I actually really like about Sundered is... It's got a good mix between being randomly generated and still requiring you to have a grasp on what the map looks like because uh, it has basically has larger tiles and has smaller tiles, right? Uh, so there are larger tiles that'll connect all the larger areas and then there are smaller tiles between that that'll show off like every individual room is I guess these smaller tiles that are randomly generated and there's like a, there's, like, a tile set for every region and you can kind of know what you're doing in every tile but where the tiles are will completely change how you interact with them and i think that can that can change the way that you move in the game which is something that i enjoy when i'm running it keeps me on my toes but it still lets my practice mean something i think it's really nice all right it's the right start here we're just really cutscene. i mean we hold right there but it's basically the same as cutscene right here and we're going to go right into the tutorial. Uh, so we've got uh, just basic movement, right, just our jump, or roll, standard stuff right here. Push right there, yep. And we've got our wall jump. And so our rolls will take energy, which are going to be these uh, yellow bars on our uh, right here, bottom right of our UI. And uh, that's going to that's gonna basically be our only wall at the start of the run, uh, will be our energy cap and just how we're interacting with that. Uh, but also our roll is going to be your main way to speed up. Uh, we're going to be trying to bunny roll through most or bunny hop through most of the game. Uh, just just to make sure that we're uh, keeping our footing up. Uh, so right here, we're going to start a bit of cutscene, and I'm going to take that time to talk about uh, the mini map, actually. So bottom right, you know, you've got just that orange symbol. That's where I am, right? And uh, right here, we're actually in Sanctuary. So we've got uh, region one is going to be on the bottom. Uh, two is going to be on the left, and three is going to be on the right. Uh, up there, there's the tutorial section, but we're not going back there, so it doesn't really matter. And uh, basically, we're going to be coming back to Sanctuary a lot. And uh, right here in my pause menu, I have Return to Sanctuary. I'm going to be abbreviating that to RTS throughout the run, uh, which is just I'm going to pause, press that button, and it's going to send me back here which is going to be useful at the end of a lot of areas where there's not really much ways to go. You'd have to come all the way back. It would take a long time, especially during the early parts where you have uh, not much movement at your disposal. Uh, so that's just going to be, uh, yeah, that's just going to be a nice, a useful thing to, to use with the run. And we're actually going to have a short uh, cutscene skip here. Uh, it saves a lot of in-game time, but uh, uh, very little um, real time. Uh, so right here, I'm just going to exit and re-enter the game, which is going to skip the little cutscene where we're going to use our sword there. And then we're going to drop right into region one. Uh, so right at the beginning here, we're going to have uh, fast dropping, uh, which is just going to be uh, whenever I'm dropping through a platform. Uh, so I've got my ground pound. As soon as I got my sword, I've got my ground pound, right? And I can also drop through platforms. 
Uh, and if I combine both of those, I can actually just do both at the same time, and that'll drop me through a bunch of platforms at once, which will just allow me to move a lot faster through these starting areas. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, like I've played the game, that makes movement huge. Yeah, that, that changes a lot from having to drop through every platform or even just holding uh, A and dropping down. Like, it's just a huge difference just being a lot, yeah. uh, able to carry your ground pound speed like that. And so right here, uh, a lot of the beginning of the game, we're going to be a little bit railroaded here. Uh, technically, you can go up there, but we're not going to be able to do that through the run, and it would be a lot slower to go back anyway. Uh, so an interesting thing about the generation is even though it's somewhat random, you can kind of see a method to its madness in a way, which is why I immediately went right there. Uh, basically, the, the gist of it is that the game wants to create paths to the large doors, and because of that, you can kind of tell that, uh, or, and, and it also wants to make every path mean something. So right here, oh, this is actually a bit unlucky. I was hoping I would get a different layout to explain this sort of. But uh, basically, sometimes you'll have a route that will go up here. So for instance, right here, uh, let me actually just, uh, yeah, yeah, let me pause here and use the, my mouse here, right? Uh, sometimes you'll have uh, a route that'll go up here and left here. And even though we're trying to move over here where we're still going up, uh, we're actually gonna want to go left there because most of the time, it's trying to create a separate path to go this way rather than making one continuous path that goes through both because I believe the game wants to put tiles in as many places as it can. It doesn't want to leave all this empty space and just have like a clear path that makes it easy to go through no matter what. And I think that uh, that makes a lot of the, the weirder generation in this game make sense. Uh, there's a really nice example in the next region that we'll actually get to look at a bit later. Uh, right here, we're just gonna unlock a shortcut for later. Uh, there's a mini boss down right below us and we're just gonna come back there later. But we just want to open that now because there's no reason to come back here other than to grab that. Uh, so now we're just going to kind of get a little bit familiar with our starting moveset, right? We've got just our, our sword, right? But uh, especially our up air is going to be very useful in this beginning section. Just because it'll give us just a tiny bit more height, which isn't a lot later on, but it, it makes a huge difference early here when we don't even have a double jump yet. Uh, and so we're just going to be progressing towards the top left here where we're going to see a bit of an empty battery symbol right here. And right there, we need to power that. So we need to come over here and do a little bit of a horde fight here, just to power that. Uh, so for horde, uh, so for uh, horde fights especially, uh, it's it's useful always. But uh, for horde fights especially, we get a large window before the fight to kind of charge up our finisher meter, uh, which is our purple bar at the bottom there. And uh, so what I like to do for that is I usually like to uh, hit barrels one at a time just to make sure that I can, uh, because the finisher meter actually charges up. It's It takes 12 hits to charge up, but it doesn't matter what you hit as long as you hit something. And it also doesn't matter how many things you hit. So if you hit multiple barrels at once, you'll end up losing out on charges. And the same applies to enemies, though at least with enemies you're doing damage. And so really right here, I just want to get rid of everything in this room. Uh, I kind of want to focus on these uh, big guys up here because uh, there are less of them that'll spawn and they're also stationary, whereas everything else will kind of chase you throughout the, this little map here. So there should just be this and that little guy there. And we should be out. Nice. Uh, and since I actually have a finisher here, I can show off a small trick right up ahead. Uh, I'm going to open the switch first. Uh, uh, the finisher can be used in multiple directions, which will allow it to have multiple forms. So it'll have that ring form, which is what I use usually just because it has a giant hitbox. And then it's got uh, just one form for every direction. And the upward direction actually carries you upwards, which you can use to replace a double jump sometimes, which can allow you to do something that looks kind of like this, which allows you to get through that a lot more easily. And it also looks pretty smooth compared to what you would have to do. You have to kind of go off the walls there and especially without some of the faster movement from later, it would it would feel a lot more segmented, I guess, uh, if I was to not have my finisher ready there. Uh, so right here are the shards, which I'm gonna be referring to as XP for the rest of the run because, I mean, one, it kind of functions as XP and also there are a lot of things called shards in this game for whatever reason. We have shards, we have, we have the mini shards here, we've got our shard fragments, and then we've got our large shards. And that can get a bit confusing, so I'm just going to call those ones XP. 
and I'm going to call the, uh, the smaller ones that aren't those fragments, and then the biggest ones, I'm just going to call the actual shards. So right here we have a boss, um, similar to the, uh, similar to the power room, I actually want to pre-hit it. Um, while the boss, while the mini boss doesn't take damage while I'm hitting it there, uh, before the fight, it does actually still give me finisher charges, and right here, actually, um, if you can see there, it's a little bit dark, but, uh, between the U and the H, uh, is about the range I need to get to the health bar to, just because if I get it further than that, then the boss is actually gonna enter a state where it'll, uh, it'll do that little dash more times, which is gonna make it take a lot longer. Right here. So right there, I grab a perk. Uh, it's not an interesting one, so we're not gonna see it during the run, but it is still a perk. Uh, I'll be able to kind of put those on. They're kind of like Hollow Knight charms, something like that, right? Where you can just kind of put them on and they'll give you a little effect. And you've got like a number of slots. Ooh, that's a bit unlucky. Uh, so yeah, occasionally you'll dead end like that, but uh, usually the game actually is pretty good about dead ends. Aside from like very small dead ends where it's like one, I guess one block on the mini map there. Uh, usually there aren't actually very many dead ends, which is why I, um, which is why I thought of the whole every path sort of has a purpose thing. Because I feel like very often, right, every path, like right here, right, you'll have a path that it'll go down to that, um, oh, I don't have a mouse here, actually. Uh, you'll have a path that'll go down there, but you'll also have a path that'll go to the left, uh, off there, and then you'll have the path that we actually took. Uh, so right over here, our double jump is gonna be very useful. Um, one, just because it's a double jump, right? I mean, any double jump is good. But um, a nice thing about this double jump is actually that it resets whenever you hit either uh, a barrel or an enemy, uh, which is very useful for just traversing, especially in these early sections where we have nothing else to work with. We just have a double jump. Um, we can use this, we can just use our double jump to, to reset off things. And I mean, even enemies just appearing can give us a lot more range of mobility uh, than we usually have. Though, uh, usually I can't just rely on enemies spawning, so I have to more so hope for uh, for a room with a barrel in it. Because, you know, they're gonna, the barrel's gonna stand a lot more still. Might be a little bit easier to hit sometimes. Uh, so right here, we've got just a bit of an ability check here. We need the double jump to get through here. We're just gonna be heading over to the left. And over to the left here, we'll find our second region where we'll get a few more abilities to actually work with. Right now, we've just kind of got a little bit of speed, but nothing nothing really too crazy. We're just kind of moving right now. Uh, so for, throughout the most of the beginning of the game, we're going to be grabbing abilities, and then later on, we're going to be doing a bit of a boss rush at the end because we're going to have everything open. And since the game has a skill tree that's unlocked by that XP, it has a sort of weird state where we need, we need to travel around first, even though... Um, even though we don't get much added to our combat moveset, we really only get one added ability uh, onto our combat. Um, and even with that, it doesn't really... We actually don't use it in combat very much. We actually use the double jump a lot more in combat because um, while the double jump resets... or Yeah, the double jump resets when you attack something, but also attack uh, double jumping cancels your attack which means that you can actually get a lot of damage off on anything that's either stuck in the air or that is moving upwards uh, pretty slowly, uh, just by like double jumping and canceling your attacks, uh, which can be pretty nice. And so right up here shortly, we're gonna come up on that uh, room I was talking about where we're gonna see a bit of a bit more of the, the random generation logic that we've got applied here. Uh, so right here, uh, we wanna go to the left there. And so we would think, oh, I'm going to go to the left. I, I'm, I, I want to go to the left, so I'm going to try and go to the left. But we're going to come upon this room. Oh, that's actually pretty convenient. I'm going to grab this treasure. But um, we're going to come upon uh, Dead End here uh, because the game doesn't want us to just come over here and just be like, okay, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's actually really lucky. That's a nice perk. Um, uh, yeah, the game doesn't want us to just take one path here and just be done with it. So what it's going to do is it's gonna create a bit of an arc in this room, uh, a nice, a bit of a rainbow, actually, if we're if we're lucky on exactly how it looks, it might actually look quite like that. Uh, but generally, the, the point, oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, but generally the point is it'll try to make a little path to all of these doors, and it doesn't just want to create one straight path, because if it just creates one straight path, we're just gonna walk straight through here, and we're not gonna, we're not gonna get a sense of how big this area is. 
So instead, we're going to be kind of thrust around here, right? There's going to be a path set up to that door. And you can see a little bit of the path set to the right door in here. And we're going to be sent all the way to this left. The bottom left path right here, which is where we actually want to go. I'll just get behind one door. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice um, it's a nice quirk of the generation that it that it'll definitely it, it gets it takes some getting used to, but it allows you to sort of see what decisions are greedy in advance. And I think that I think that enriches the the RNG aspect because it doesn't just feel like you're cheated. Sometimes it definitely does. I, I'm not gonna lie. Definitely sometimes it feels like you're cheated, but usually it'll actually you can actually look back and see sort of why uh, path was wrong a lot of the time. Uh, so right up here, we're coming up on a hidden fragment, just right here. I'm gonna up slash here to grab that. And finally, okay, yeah. And finally, we're gonna enter this purple area here. Now, last time I was on GDQ, actually I died here, which was a bit unfortunate. Uh, but the reason is actually because this area is a lot higher level than we're than we are at this point in the game As I said earlier, there is a skill tree and because of that We will get stronger throughout the game Which means that the game expects us to be stronger here And so all the enemies and whatnot are all gonna be a little bit stronger here like right there You see that just chunked my health bar And that would actually I, I would rather not die here actually please. Okay, yeah uh, But yeah, that'll just chunk my health bar and so that isn't great, so we, we're just gonna zoom right through here. I mean, obviously we wanna be fast anyway, but there's a little bit more focus on uh, staying alive throughout this section, just because if you die here, right, that's a pretty large time loss. Uh, ooh, okay, yeah. Uh, Does, yeah, if you die here, that's, yeah? Do you have any, like, tips besides just moving fast to uh, get I mean, right now it's kind of just moving fast, because we're kind of just, yeah. we're, we're, we're really just moving forward right now. Yeah. Uh, right here is when we, we sort of get a bit more depth to our moveset, because at first we're just kind of bunny hopping, right? We don't really have a lot to work with. We're kind of just moving along. Sure, yeah. And so, so right here we have, um, right here we have our dash, which uh, it is, it functions as an air dash, but we're using it more for, for aerial positioning more than actually for speed because it is just, it's a very short dash and it'll completely stop our momentum. Like if, if we've been bunny hopping for like a year and a half, like this is still gonna just stop us completely just immediately when we stop. And that's, that's just not gonna help us um, mobility wise, or that's just not gonna help us move faster. So we're really just trying to, oh my goodness, okay, wait, yeah, actually, I actually completely forgot something right here. Okay, so as we're heading up here, uh, we actually wanna be uh, just taking a quick peek at the mini-map. I, I did, but I wasn't talking about it. Uh, we wanna take a quick peek, peek at the mini-map uh, to see where, uh, where our exit down here is. Uh, because right here we have our ability check for dash. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have our ability check for a dash right down there, and a lot of what you're doing in the meantime, I guess, because, yeah, ultimately, game-wise, you're just moving forward, but a lot of what you're actually doing is looking at the mini-map instead of looking at Ash, which is your character. Uh, and the reason for that is because the randomly generated rooms, while you can look at what you see in front of you, a lot of the time, especially uh, past this point right here, where we're moving quite slowly, um, we are going to be mostly moving a little bit faster than the camera can keep up with. Not permanently, but we will very often be moving faster than the camera, and so it'll actually be faster to look at the minimap than to look at Ash. And so this ability is the ability that opens up the run. This is when I think... I, I, this is when I think the movement takes off, because up until here, the movement's fine and it is fluid, but it's not... it's nothing special, I guess, up until here. Uh, so here we have um, our smash attack. Uh, by default, it's inputted like a smash attack from Smash. However, uh, usually I would prefer to set it to a separate button because we don't really use it as an attack at all. Uh, so right here, I'm on, on the ground. I'm just going to show. Uh, so this is this is without any any directional input. I am just pressing the smash attack button and rolling out of it. And this is this is just with no movement input at all. And so right here, we're going to just use this and we're gonna hold uh, left and down and double jump there. And that's just gonna send us right through there. And that technique right there, we're just gonna call that the smash dash. And that's what we're gonna be using a lot of the time here. Uh, so really uh, from here, our, our base movement is mostly gonna be um, 
uh, smash. We're, we're just going to be smash dashing uh, through areas right here, and we're going to be trying to look at the map. Hopefully, we remember a little bit of it. Uh, oh, actually, I want to go back there. Sorry. Uh, we want to be remembering a little bit of that, uh, of, of what we've just gone through, but we're mostly just kind of looking at the mini map here um, rather than looking at what we're doing because we are moving a little bit faster than, than, uh, than our eyes will be able to keep up with if we look at the camera. And so right here, I'm going to RTS after grabbing Rebirth. Uh, Rebirth's base effect, it's a perk, but it, what it normally does is it just revives you and you get like half, uh, you, you get half XP, but you get one revive um, per run, which is just whenever you're not, uh, a run here is just defined as any time that you haven't come back to Sanctuary. And so we're actually gonna be using uh, the rebirth effect because rebirth has a weird side effect later. Uh, but right here, we're just gonna be grabbing a few skills. We're gonna come over here to grab uh, the luck because luck will increase how much XP we get. And we're gonna get some energy regeneration because that will, uh, I mean, our energy will regenerate. That will make us a little bit faster because we'll be able to roll more. And so real quick, we're just gonna head back over to the left here and we're gonna grab Nemesis. Uh, now, important thing to worry about here is actually if this is open, uh, if this is open, there's gonna be no spike here, right? If this is closed, actually, there will be a spike here. And I believe the reason is because it's intending to feel fair uh, by, not, uh, by not trapping you just for standing there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so right here, really important thing uh, is just getting smashed, uh, kind of getting used to looking at the map and not Ash as much as you can. Because the more that you're looking at the map, uh, the more you can, the more you can sort of actually gauge where, oh, okay, that's funny. Okay, yeah. the more you're looking at the map, uh, the more you can gauge what you're properly, um, what you're getting yourself into rather than, whereas if looking at the screen is helpful, but often it'll give you a bit of a, it'll give you a bit of a misleading sense of where you're going. So as you're heading through here, you wanna be looking for uh, this grape soda uh, falling down from the ceiling. Uh, so right here, actually, we have a really convenient one right here. And we just want to grab this. Uh, this is going to be important uh, in a minute. It's just Nemesis. It'll make bosses stronger, but they'll give us more XP. Just a nice trade-off. And right here, we can see that Rebirth will do a uh, screen flash when we die. But dying in that grape soda will give us Moon Jump. And we're going to explore that a little bit more closely at Sanctuary. Just because it's a bigger, it's a, it's a nice open area to kind of look at it. All right, so right here, Moon Jump uh, does kind of give us Moon Physics. So, I mean, just jumping, we fall slower. If we hold A longer, we'll jump a lot higher. And most importantly for our purposes, if you press A, you'll rock it up into the sky like that. And that is most of what we're going to be using here. Uh, and so something that we can use without Moon Jump, but is way easier to use with Moon Jump, is we can actually Smash Dash in the air as long as we don't have energy we can actually smash dash in the air like that. Unfortunately, we have to ground pound in the middle of it, which makes it a little bit more unwieldy. But it is, this is when uh, you sort of, you really start moving, you're moving in every direction a little bit faster than you'd like to be. But uh, speed is king, so it works out. The moon jumping is my favorite tech in this game. It's uh, it's actually the reason I wanted uh, this game to be taught because I just love this glitch. It is fantastic movement. Yeah, it's it's a lot to get used to, and I think an important thing with moon jump is that because the move is so fast, you're. Um, you're convinced that what you want to do at the start is just go all out with it. But I think actually when starting, it's a lot more, it's a lot better to, to be a bit more cautious with it because moon jump itself will already make you fast. You'll already be moving fast just by moon jumping. And so it's a lot more, uh, it works out a lot better if you allow yourself to lean into its speed and be a bit more cautious while letting it rocket you forward when you know where you're going rather than starting off just trying to go completely bonkers with it and you'll end up kind of running into a lot of things, running into a lot of bushes and losing a lot of health that you don't need to. 
Uh, so right here, not too much. We're really just going through like a small dark maze here. A very important thing, whenever we get to a new region, we need to connect it back to the sanctuary. Uh, it's something that's surprisingly easy to forget at first. And if you do it and then return to sanctuary, you'll realize that you've completely missed. Like you've, you're completely gone now because now you have to go all the way back through another region just to get back. And we're not gonna want that when we're going back through bosses. Uh, so right here, I'm just gonna moon jump through the elevator. Uh, grab these switches as we go up because later we're gonna be coming back through here without moon jump. And right here, I'm actually gonna grab Steel Spine, which isn't necessary, but it is something that's uh, a nice safety thing to have, and it's not really out of the way. Uh, it does have, there is a slight disadvantage to grabbing it at all, uh, just because it adds, it adds itself to the loot pool as soon as we collect it, but that's really not too big a deal. And so right here, we're gonna be grabbing uh, four locks to, to just hit the center here. And uh, we're gonna be uh, going off to the left here, but uh, a nice setup to go over here, right, is this third pillar right here. Uh, we're just gonna start a smash dash here. Oh, wait, whoopsie. We're just gonna start a smash dash here and just hold down and then roll when you hit this platform. And then you can sort of adjust a little bit, but then you'll land it directly on the grappling hook, which is nice. Uh, the grappling hook is one of the more reactionary um, yeah, yeah, it's one of the more reactionary abilities that we get because unlike, um, unlike a lot of stuff like our smash and whatever, we can just kind of use it whenever, but the grappling hook needs a target. So right now I'm pressing my grapple button. It won't hook onto anything unless there's something there, uh, which are either these anchors, which are relatively rare or enemies, which is actually something that's really fun, uh, when you actually get to use it, uh, when you actually get an enemy that's in a, a nice spot for you to actually grapple to and just move a lot faster with that. Uh, so right here, so as you're coming up from getting a grappling hook, uh, right here, as you're coming up the elevator, you actually want to come up to the right here and bonk your head on this. And if you're lucky, there won't be anything here. And you'll just be able to aerial smash dash right over to here, which that's just that's just nice and satisfying if you manage to get that. Uh, if not, uh, there usually will still be like a little bit of stuff there. But I mean, if not, you really just come up here. Nothing too bad. Maybe grapple off a few enemies if you take a while. Come down after. Nothing too complicated either way. And so right here, when you're coming back down, so we're going to want to fast drop again, but we're going to want to fast drop on the right of the elevator so that we don't hit the, uh, so we don't hit this middle thing. And we want to count to three. So we want to uh, count two of these platforms and then land on the third one. So we just... We're just heading over to the right here, nothing too big. We want to smash dash and just kind of conserve all of our, um, conserve our ability to go up. Uh, so the the three things we have at our disposal to uh, go back up with um, during that section, right? We have our jump, we have our attack, and we have our up attack, which are separate uh, because moon jump makes our normal attack also uh, hover us slightly upward. And when... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, when we're we're trying to go off over a long gap like that, we have to sort of space them out. Otherwise, we're gonna end up just losing all of our momentum and falling down, and that's not great. Uh, so right here, we want to come around the middle. Uh, better to be further to the left than to the right, and just fall down directly here. And we've got some smoke there. That smoke actually is a damage over time effect if we're in it, and it eventually becomes a kill plane if we go too far out. And so we just want to come right under the staircase, slide right in between these bushes, and grab a fragment here. And then right here, what we want to do actually is we want to start a smash dash, and then about probably about this third, um, this third pillar here, this third lantern, I guess, uh, is oh. Oh, I actually messed that up. Uh, around there is when we actually want to jump and hold left a bit, but then reel it in just a bit and look at the map just to see where um, where these clouds are and just m maneuver just directly to the side of the clouds and you'll come back up here. That'll be fine. Uh, for other routes, we can grab this. I don't actually need it for any percent, though, so we're just going to come up here. And during moon jump, uh, this is helpful anytime, but it's always useful here is you'll start to get really slow like this. And so if you swing, then it'll actually reset your double jump without hitting anything, but only in moon jump. And I'm not sure why that is. And so right there, we're just gonna hit that switch and return to Sanctuary.
Uh, so right here, so whenever we hit our skill tree, usually whenever we get here, we actually want to uh, buy some upgrades. But um, for a little bit here, uh, up until we actually get rid of Rebirth again, uh, we don't actually want to do that because Rebirth, uh, while Rebirth will give, a, give us fewer shards, we're actually going to get something that's going to um, that's going to make everything on this board cheaper. And so we don't want to spend anything until we get that upgrade. And so we want to make sure, like, we want to get those first upgrades, uh, especially the luck one, because that'll give us more shards anyway. And so it's worth the, the cost, actually. But up until then, we want to make sure that we don't grab anything, uh, that we don't grab anything else. So right here, we're going to need to come to the left later here. So just quickly grab that now. It's perfectly fine. And we're just going to come over to the right here, where we're going to have a nice little skip here. Nice, simple skip. Um, just right... Oh, whoops. Uh, right there. Uh, so the, the smash attack actually has... It, it counts as a melee hit, which allows it to hit these switches, uh, but it actually has a really wide hitbox, which still allows it to um, hit through certain doors. I think there's one other door in the game where that's useful, uh, but it isn't in any percent, so we don't use it here. And... I mean, really here, uh, we can go all the way down there just to find uh, where we can find a right passageway, but luckily we already found one, so we don't need to go down there. And uh, so we're just going to head up here. A uh, nice thing to get used to is to just dash immediately out of your moon jump. Uh, so whenever you've used your double jump to just rock it up, uh, just dashing... I mean, at first dashing when you see anything, but just getting used to dashing to, to cancel your upward momentum... Uh, can be really nice. Uh, sometimes it'll... Sometimes we'll stop a bit early, but it's better sometimes to do that than to completely overshoot what you're going for. Which can also be helped by looking at the map. Treasures right here. Uh, treasures are hidden sort of all over the place here. Okay, um, tre treasures are sort of hidden all over the place. They're usually shown by little kind of divots in the walls. And there's a bit of a... You, you're playing a bit of a decision-making game uh, as you're going through if you hear these treasures, uh, whether to grab them or not. And personally, I like to grab pretty few of them, unless they're right on, I'm right on top of them. But uh, some people find a lot of success grabbing more than me. Some people find um, some success just not grabbing any. Um, and I think that that's a, a nice little bit of um, a nice little bit of depth sometimes. Uh, so right here we've got a bit of a complicated section. We've got to look at a bit of a switch puzzle here with lasers, right? It's not it's not too much of a puzzle. You can just go through it. Um, but what we're going to want to do here is immediately when we come in here, we're going to want to smash dash, and then uh, we're going to immediately want to fast drop. But we're going to start start from up here, uh, which is going to drop us right through this platform, and we're going to roll here. We're just going to hit this. Uh, we're going to tank lasers. We're going to tank a lot of lasers here, uh, both because we want to die and because it's faster. Uh, and so right here, uh, I'm just going to move this slightly slowly just to show both of these switches, right? The green and the blue, and then hit the red. Come down here, we want to squeeze through this laser here. Not too big of a deal if you get hit, but it is still important to make sure that you don't take too much damage. Yellow, and then right here again, you need to remember to be ready to dash whenever you're moon jumping, just to completely cancel your momentum, uh, which is why it's more positioning than movement for the dash. The red there yo here and then uh we can actually either come through here if we want to be faster or if we want to be a bit safer we can come up here before we hit this switch and then we're just going to roll this way and come up here and uh, right here we're mostly just going to follow a bit of a route here just hit the purple switch the green switch what we actually want to do i shouldn't have, uh, i'm actually going to unhit this just to show this off real quick uh, what we want to do here, actually, is we want to uh, hold our smash here, not for very long, but we want to just hit our smash here and just immediately mash jump out of there because we'll immediately go through the lasers without hitting them. Uh, which can save a bit of health. Even though we want to die right up ahead, uh, it can be nice to just hold on to a fair amount of health just to just to make sure, especially uh, towards the beginning of running, just that you don't... Because if you die early here, it'll take a lot more time and it's not very helpful. And so right here... We have our third big switch. And so that'll have unlocked all the doors over here. And finally, we'll have our dong fight. Uh, so right here, uh, what we want to do is we want to kill three of these meteoroids without... Um, we want to kill three of these meteoroids without too much trouble and relatively quickly. 
and then we want to die immediately after. Uh, so what we're going to do to do that is we're going to stand here, and we're going to use four hits of just our standing melee combo, uh, just to just to keep them locked here. And we want to keep as many locked here as we can. I mean, we really only need the three, but if we can get another one... Okay, yeah, see, that one was very far away, and sometimes we'll get them in the air like this. Uh, we can still hit them out of their startup in the air, so it's fine if they are in the air, it's just more convenient when they're on the ground because we can we do a little bit more damage and it's a little bit faster. Right here was a little bit slow here, so I can just grab this one right here. And as soon as that one's dead, I can just tank all the damage that I need. Right here. Try and move my camera a little bit, see if I can see a nice perk or something. I don't really see. I'm still gonna grab all the shards here. And what we want to do is immediately when we grab the mask, we want to return. And that mask uh, right there will actually lower all the costs on here. So now we're freed up to buy things on this tree. And there's a lot of choice available with this tree. Um, but there are a few important things uh, consistently. Uh, one of which is actually that... Oh, that's unfortunate. I actually didn't have enough of that. Um, one thing that's very important consistently is that you want damage over anything else even when you're starting it may be intimidating to to kind of go for min maxing damage on the tree uh occasionally because uh, our shard route does leave us kind of poor and so we're a little bit far behind uh compared to where we would usually be for some boss fights uh however it's actually still better to min max for damage rather than to go for safety and health because the way i like to see it is that if you have if you deal more damage you have less opportunities to make mistakes whereas if you have more health you can just make more mistakes without um without dying and i guess the difference between the two the difference between the two is subtle in a way but i think that since the damage will always result in the faster run and you're wanting to avoid the mistakes anyway right you don't want to be making mistakes and then patching them up you want to be uh, you want to be getting to a point where you're not making mistakes. So I think it's a lot better to, to just min-max damage, even when you're starting out, to not really worry about a lot of the uh, more sustain-oriented uh, nodes on the tree. And so right here, as soon as we enter, uh, as soon as we enter this big block on the map, uh, we'll actually sort of trigger this boss right here, uh, who will sort of be like cloaked. Uh, I, I need him just a little bit more before he will. Really? Okay, this is hiding. Okay, yeah, right there. And so this boss is a little bit intimidating at first uh, because we are a little bit under under leveled for him. But uh, something very easy to realize with him is that he has one attack and it's just he'll raise his arms. And as long as you roll every time he raises his arms, you should be fine. Uh, don't press too hard into these walls because if you uh, because if you run up the wall, you'll actually do your air dash instead of your. Um, instead of your ground roll, which has a lot more, um, your ground roll has a lot more iframes than your air dash does. And so, and so yeah, you'll, you, you, you can kind of just get yourself hit if you, uh, if you run into this wall and then dash like that. Uh, so after we grab that, uh, shard right there, or after we grab that fragment right there, uh, we're gonna head right back down here, uh, to finally get our last ability, which is actually gonna be our gun. Uh, if we if we manage to look at this um, quickly when we're entering the room, if we have this room on our layout, then we can actually see um, if it's on the left, if the if the door on the bottom is on the left side, then we can actually always ground pound here. I mean, really, we'd want to do uh, the jump ground pound there. Um, and then if it's on the other side, there's another spot in the room instead, which is right here that you would instead want to ground pound at. That's just a nice little speed thing there. Overall, though, just want to hit as many barrels in this room as you can, uh, at least without losing too much time. And then we're going to grab our cannon. Uh, now, we can use the cannon to dash similar to how we use the smash, but it's not its not too practical to do so for most of the run, also because it's a little bit impractical to come here early, uh, which is why we still grab this so late, even though it's in the first region. Uh, and right after we grab this, just to get a little bit more money, we can actually just cannon dash this way and then smash dash back this way which will be a little bit slower than just going through the door when it opens, but we'll also have a lot more money. That's nice. And right here, again, if you see treasure, I'd, I'd say take it. If, you, if it's right in the way, there's no reason not to grab it. 
Uh, but actually, in this case, a little bit out of the way. Uh, so, uh, th this is going back yep. a little bit. You took the intentional Absolutely. death, uh, which, so I, I know that is to get rid of uh, Moon Jump, but what oh, is the I actually, reason? Yeah. What is the reason? What is the reason to to take to take that instead of uh, doing something else? Well, so what's like, the why? reason of getting rid of Moon Jump specifically? Uh, uh, the reason that we want to get rid of Moon Jump, uh, it is faster to go through this area with Moon Jump. However, Moon Jump is very difficult to use during combat because when you, uh, as I was saying, um, or I, I, said, I think I mentioned it once actually, is I mentioned that your normal attack will always make you rise when you're in the air. And a lot of the bosses in this game, as we're going to see pretty quickly here, uh, a lot of them, even if they aren't airborne, they will require you to be airborne while fighting them. And because of that, it's very difficult to... to Because you'd have to sort of be ground pounding and jumping, and it would be very cumbersome to actually carry Moon Jump with you into a fight. Oh, and there's nothing more. Okay. It would be very cumbersome to carry Moon Jump with you into a fight, yeah. Uh, thank you, actually, for asking about that. That's something that's... That's very important. Uh, that, that, that is an important thing, because usually Moon Jump, while you have it, it seems like such a great thing, and so you would think there's no downside to it, and it's, like, the centerpiece of the run in a way. It's a lot of, it's a lot of people's favorite part, and so you think, why get rid of it ever? But, yeah, it's just not... It's very impractical to use um, during fights. Uh, and this fight would not be too bad with it. We're mostly on the ground, but um, right after that, we're going to fight. Oh, actually, right here. I'm just going to... Uh, nice little thing. If you ever come up into this room, you can always uh, you do a cannon shot here, uh, preferably a cannon dash, uh, and that'll open the door here. Uh, because the way that we open this door is with this up here, and this can actually be hit from both sides. Uh, so right here, again, we want to pre-hit the boss because we get finisher charges from it. And so this boss is a little bit weird. We've got three hitboxes here, uh, right? So we've got one here, one here, and one off to the side here. Uh, we want to hit the middle one a little bit at the start, just because that's where we are at the beginning. We may as well get some hits in. And we want to come over here to the left. And when we come over here to the left, we want to start firing cannon shots, because the cannon shots will actually go through the first one here and hit the left one. And we're going to get our melee hits in because our cannon does cost energy, which does make it a little bit more difficult to uh, just consistently keep up damage with. And also, we only have a little bit of ammo. Uh, so we just want to get as much damage off as we can with the cannon, just hitting both of those. And then for the rest of this fight, we're mostly just um, weaving in and out. Uh, as soon as we see it sort of curl up like that, we can see the spikes are about to come, and that's when we need to roll away. Uh, other than that, we just need to make sure to stay away from these... Um, we're going to see these, like, yellow lines kind of pop up right before the... Uh, or before the thorn comes out for us, and we need to make sure to dodge that as well. A uh, nice little loop you can have here sometimes is just like this, just jumping off this wall and ground pounding here. Sometimes you'll get caught up like that, though, which is why I don't like to just purely stick to that. And there we are. We have our fragment, and now we're kind of... We're, we're kind of in go mode now. We, we have about everything we need. There's one other thing we need to go a little bit off to the side for, but even that is directly on the way to our next mini boss, or, or on, the, on the way to our next boss. Uh, so right here, this upgrade uh, that I wasn't able to get earlier is very important to grab as soon as you can because it's 15% melee damage, which is just massive because all these, this is like plus three every time I click on this. But um, that 15% is going to be huge. Not only is it making every plus three here, I, I think it actually rounds it to a plus four or maybe it does something like this is now 10. Uh, but not only is that just a lot of damage by itself, but it also gives you a huge boost in damage immediately when you grab it. Uh, other than that, we want to be aiming for these crit nodes because uh, critical strikes are just huge in this game. And um, in a moment, we're actually going to get something that's going to make them even better than they are. So we really want to focus on grabbing the crit nodes as soon as we can once we come back here. Um, yeah, yeah, just once we come back here. And then we want Nemesis because uh, this is going to make the boss a little bit harder, but it's also going to make it give us more XP which is very important because, especially in any percent, we are quite starved of XP, so we need to try and get more in any way we can, and one of the best ways of doing that is grabbing Nemesis. Uh, so right... Oh, I completely glossed over that. Okay, uh, so right here, we come into Bastion, and he tells us it's going to be a really hard time, but really all we want to do is just come up here, uh, and we just want to smash dash across this and just jump across it. 
and you should be able to just get right in between there. If not, not a big deal. Afterwards, may as well use your elixir because you'll probably get a laser or two on the way. And really, the, the health should not be too big of a deal with this boss. Uh, it is the first region's boss, which will make it the easiest by default, and there isn't too much to go over for the boss itself, but that means that it's a good time to go over, um, to go over how bosses tend to work in general. Uh, so in this game, uh, bosses, uh, instead of hitting the boss directly, what will tend to be uh, the way it works is these purple shards will come out of the boss and you are actually hitting those. Uh, so each one holds a third of the boss's health and it'll break once you, uh, it'll break once you do all the damage to it. And often they'll be in areas where it'll be more convenient to hit one than the other. This boss is really not too much of a case of that, in my opinion. Uh, you can hit, uh, you can choose to hit the uh, shards in a certain order, but usually it's best to just hit whatever's closest for this boss because it's, with the, all the movement that you have from going through all the regions before coming here, it's not really too big of a deal. And right here, you can see I'm sort of, um, sort of double jumping in between hits a little bit. Oh, that's not okay. Yeah. I'm double jumping in between hits, which is something that's actually pretty important to consistently do. Uh, just because, um, just because, as I was saying earlier, right, uh, your double jump uh, is reset by your hits and your hits are cancelled by your double jump, which just means that as much as you can, it's best to double jump hit. Uh, I usually try to hit twice and then double jump and then hit twice again. And then occasionally if it's on the ground, uh, I will uh, just do a ground combo. And so right here, I'm going to show you what happened. Oh, that's, of course, I got Nemesis too. Um, I'm going to show you what happens if you don't skip the cutscene, but uh, the bosses will have a short little skippable cutscene after they're dead. Um, the cutscene right here, it will magnetize the rest of the shards to you. So you're going to see some come in from the right, I believe. And it's just going to form the shard in the middle, and it's going to form this black void thing. And during this entire cutscene, I can't pause, I can't RTS, I can't do anything. And what we're going to do for the other bosses, uh, except for the final boss, uh, what we're going to do for the other region bosses is we're going to pause there and just RTS uh, to skip that, because that's a lot of time, and it's even worth uh, losing some shards. Um, I would say don't lose the perks, but um, it's even worth losing some shards to to make sure that you uh, to make sure that you don't go through that whole cutscene, because that's like an extra 20 seconds that you don't need to waste. Uh, and so right after we grab this, actually, um, instead of immediately uh, doing our skill tree, um, we're actually going to go burn all the shards that we have up until this point, uh, which will give us a bunch more XP to work with, uh, which is also why we want to not bother with the tree right now, just because we're about to bother with the tree. We're, we're about to get a bunch of shards anyway, so it doesn't really make sense to, um, to, to level your tree twice back to back. It makes a little bit more sense to just um, to just burn the shards here and deal with the tree a bit. Uh, just deal with the tree after. And so right here, you'll notice this fire symbol on the map, which will show the incinerator, right? You're going to burn your shards, get some XP. That's all well and good. Um, now, the, this is going to do two things. Uh, one, it's going to make um, it's going to make our sword mad at us, which isn't going to matter too much because we're not going to make him we're not going to make him mad enough to betray us this run. Um, but also what it'll do is it'll grant us some new abilities on our tree, uh, which will show up at the bottom right under where the perks are. And these abilities are, uh, they're, they're a bit different than the usual ones that show up on the tree. Most of them are either, uh, percent stats or, um, or like flat stats, which will, I guess, scale with the percentages of have them. Uh, but these ones will actually be, um... But these ones uh, tend to actually change gameplay a little bit, not too, too much, but just enough, right? Uh, so the two we're gonna grab is we're gonna have one that's gonna make the last hit of our combo do more damage, and a different one is going to make, uh, and the different and the other one is going to make our critical hits explode. Also on the map there, uh, you'll notice the fire symbol dimmed, and when the fire symbol dims, that means that you put in your last shard, which can be a nice way to keep track of it if you're not counting. Or just to be absolutely sure if you think you miscounted. So right here, down here, right, we can see the these two nodes right here. Uh, and these are the two that we want right now. And then there's also another one over here, which yeah, I'm just going to call the lightsaber, which will make our attacks destroy projectiles, which is going to be very important, especially for the upcoming boss. Uh, now, since I have a nice perk here in Assassin, I'm actually going to go up and grab this. I would actually say usually as much as possible to avoid getting extra perks 
um, unless... Or just to avoid getting extra perks, uh, unless you feel like you have something amazing. Like, if you have Assassin here, you have uh, maybe Sharp Edge, something like that, grab it. But otherwise, I would say to hold off on it, because these nodes actually cost a lot more than just getting the stats. And while the stats don't feel as good by themselves as getting something like an entire new perk that's like a giant percentage added on, it, it'll it feel a lot worse when that percentage is... See, this percentage is 10% crit chance. 10% crit chance doesn't matter as much if my crits only do a little bit of a little bit more damage. Uh, so next we're gonna go to the region two boss. And right here we're mostly just gonna be backtracking through an area. So there's not too too much to worry about here. Uh, there's a little bit of um, there's a little bit of greed to worry about here more than anything. Uh, since you're coming back through here with all your abilities, it's a lot easier to uh, oh that's unfortunate. Um, it's a lot easier to grab. Oh hey uh, shrine. Okay uh, so these shrines. Uh, they're kind of rare, they're backer shrines, and uh, if you hit them, you'll get a random buff. That one, or, well, there, there are a few buffs on it, and that one was poison. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna just backtrack through here. Uh, important thing... Um, wait, what was I gonna say? Right, okay, uh, important thing for greed when you're coming back through these areas is a lot of the time... Uh, especially the earlier the region that you're in. Uh, I guess it, it, it applies most here, because in the first region, you don't really come across any treasure on your way back to the boss fight, and in the third region, you also don't really come across any treasure on your way back. But especially here, it's very easy to get greedy, and... Oh, I should actually be grabbing one. Um, it's very easy to get greedy and just try and grab all the treasure that you see, but a lot of the time it's actually not worth it, and the reason for that is because it's scaled to around this point in the game. Which technically we're at this point in the game, but overall one corrupted treasure is not as big now as it was when we were first coming through here, or when we were first going through region 1 or anything like that. And also the treasures in this region tend to be a lot more off to the side. Uh, that's an arena room, we're just not going to worry about that because we don't really touch on them too much here. Uh, additionally, it's very easy to just move through here quickly and just not care about damage, but I will say it's actually... Um, I, I will say it wouldn't matter too much for the first boss, but I'd say after the first boss, um, which again really only applies to this one because this is the only one that we really go through much before we actually reach the boss, it would actually be... Um, it is actually pretty important to just keep full health right here, uh, just because sometimes this boss can be a little bit... It can be a bit deceptive. The third boss is by far the hardest of all the bosses in the game, even the final boss. But uh, this boss, I would say, is a bit deceptive with how much it hurts. Uh, so right here, it's going to start with a, a hammer attack and this pillar that I'm standing right in front of. Uh, there's a pillar right here. You're going to want to stand behind this to uh, dodge both the laser and the hammer right there and then immediately dash as soon as you can just to get to this first shard here. So, well, for the first boss, the shard order didn't really matter at all. Uh, for this boss, actually, we do care a little bit more about the shard order. And right after it turns around here, um, uh, yeah, we can fire a cannon shot there for more damage, but um, right after it turns around here, it's very important to, to get off the ground because it's about to fire another laser and then do another hammer just like it did at the beginning of the fight. Uh, so what we're going to try and do is try and find a pretty flat spot of ground here, and then smash dash and jump, double jump, and try and hit this shard again so that we can get the last little bit of damage off on here and then hit the ground again to hit this hammer up here. And the reason that's so important is because that long set of attacks where it'll shoot the laser and then use the hammer, uh, that, that long set of attacks, not only does it make it hard to hit the shards, but also it only, um, it, it's more common the closer you are to the ground. So right here, it'll do a spinny laser. We just kind of want to dash through it uh, just for iframes and try and get as many hits in as we can. Uh, the only time we really want to be close to the ground is right when the hammer hits the ground, uh, just so that we can reposition ourselves. Uh, but we don't want to be uh, near the ground at all otherwise, because right here, it's just walking like this, and it's really not very threatening like this. And it'll just do the hammer instead of not only doing the laser and the, uh, the laser before the hammer, but on top of doing that, uh, it'll sort of run away from you a bit. And right there, that was a little bit risky. You can dash through the hammer. It is a completely normal attack, all things considered. You can dash through it, 
but it is very risky as it is the only attack that I know of that that will one shot you no matter what as like when you're at this point. Oh wait, why is the health bar not empty? Okay, and so right here I'm just gonna return to Sanctuary instead of letting the cutscene play out like last time. So is that uh, gonna one shot you just because you haven't been building health, or is that just like a guaranteed one shot? I believe it's not a guaranteed one shot strictly. However, I think the amount of health you would need is practically building out the full skill tree, which is a point that we're not going to be here really ever, but especially in a speedrun, we're not gonna have that much health even if we've been building for it. Okay. Uh, so it's it's just very difficult to, to have that much. Uh, and then, so right here, uh, oh yeah, right here I'm gonna be doing a whore battle, so if I have something like Berserk or Life Absorb, which I actually happen to have both, but I'm not gonna need Life Absorb for this one, uh, these are good perks for horde battles, because this one will give you health back every time you kill an enemy, and this one will give you just, uh, stacking damage boost, um, just every time you kill an enemy, and those are both helpful in a horde battle like this, but they're not very helpful otherwise. Uh, so we're going to continue to prioritize uh, the crit nodes as much as we can. Also a few of these finisher charge nodes, which right here you can see it's now 11 charges instead of 12 to charge up my finisher, which since my finisher is a lot more damage, as long as I can grab that, um, as long as I can grab that, uh, some, a few of these, it'll actually make my finishers come up a lot faster because every single finisher I get, especially in a boss fight where I'm using a lot more of them, every single one I get is coming up faster. Uh, I usually like to grab this energy node here, um, just because uh, the third boss is actually... The third boss can kind of test your energy a little bit, and so if you're... It, it really sucks to be out of energy during that fight. Even if, um, even if you don't necessarily need it every time, having it is always better than not having it. And then right here, I usually just grab the shield. This is shield downtime. Uh, so this will make my shield come up faster when it's broken which is, or actually not even just when it's broken, I think. Uh, I think when it's broken or when it's hit, it'll take less time to come back up. Uh, I usually don't like grabbing many defensive perks, but this one is pretty close, or many defensive nodes on the tree. But uh, this one is pretty close, and it's on the way to other crit nodes and whatnot, so I still like to grab it a decent amount of time. And then I'm just going to come down here, grab this crit node, and then come down here and make my way towards this crit node. And I would have grabbed that shield as well if I could have. Uh, before you take off, uh, what are some uh, of the yep. perks that you would recommend people get if they, like, since they're random, uh, yeah. obviously? Right, right. Uh, so there are a lot that are random. There are a few that are fixed on the map. Uh, Steel Spine up there, which I believe I didn't grab, if I remember correctly. Actually, I don't remember if I grabbed it. I think I didn't. Or no, I think I did grab it. Uh, Steel I'm Spine is a good. nice one to grab there when you're starting out, um, just because it it's a nice defensive perk, and it's just on the way. And... You can decide not to use it if you get a good offensive perk instead. Uh, but if you, it's just a nice thing to have if you have nothing else. It'll make you a little bit tankier. It raises your defense and lowers your health. Um, nice pe perks to use would be um, Assassin is probably the best one. Um, it increases your crit chance, which um, once you get the crit explosion um, from burning the shards, uh, your critical strike I think does about like over three hundred percent of base damage. Uh, and so because of that, that's a really nice one to have. Uh, Berserk and Life Absorb are really good to have during hordes. Uh, Sharp Edge is just uh, base melee damage, so it's just uh, a little bit worse than Assassin, but it's still pretty nice. Uh, thing about uh, a lot of perks in this game, though, is that they have disadvantages, and that's usually the only reason you wouldn't want to use them. For instance, Rebirth is kind of nice to have in theory, but you usually don't want to use it because it'll actually... Uh, because it halves the amount of XP you get. I actually got the second rank of Rebirth, which I think makes it only uh, take away, I think I think it means I only take uh, lose a quarter of the XP that I would usually get, but it's still, um, it, it's still generally not great to have until the very end game where you're not getting much XP anyway, or you're not at least using as much of it as you'd like to, or as you would usually would. And so right here we have the fourth lock. Um, oh, right here we have the, the fourth lock to, um, for the third boss. Uh, the other bosses are sort of just, as soon as you get to the area, you'll be able to fight them. But the third boss uh, has some locks, which is what we spent a lot of our time in Region 3 getting. Uh, we did also grab the abilities while we were here, but we spent uh, a lot of time grabbing, uh, un unlocking the locks to to sort of... Uh, I, we're sort of assembling a ritual to, um, 
to free the boss effectively. And so this last one requires a horde battle, which is actually the reason that we're here so late. Otherwise we would have come here earlier because there's no real reason not to. Uh, but right here, it's just a lot easier to fight this later when we're stronger. Uh, important thing about this battle is that these uh, guys... That, oh, I, I I killed that a little bit too quickly. The guys that stick to walls there um, are actually very annoying. And if you don't kill them fast enough, uh, then they can... They can make things really annoying by just, like, standing on, like, this in the green fog and whatnot, and that's just not great. Uh, so right here, I spent a little bit of time talking, so I didn't do it. But uh, as soon as the symbol on the map dims out, you can immediately RTS. And that'll uh, put you in a good spot to spend a few extra shards if you have some. Uh, I think I might have enough to grab this shield here, which would be kind of nice. Yep, uh, a little bit more, uh, or a little bit less shield downtime. And then just immediately head right back over here to go and fight the boss. And this is, um, I would say this boss is generally the high point in difficulty in the run. A lot of what we've been, um, wait, hold on, I actually need to switch something, I think. I think I still have Berserk on, which is not gonna help me during that fight. Um, but, right, right, right. Um, the reason that this boss is, oh, I don't really have much else to use. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just use Steel Spine. See, this is a great time to use Steel Spine. I don't really have anything else to use. It's just a nice little, I get some armor, I lose some health and shields. Um, but the, the reason that this boss is actually so difficult is because even though on a base level it works the same as other bosses, it the way it functions means that your damage is sort of capped. It's not that you do less damage to this boss exactly, but uh, the damage is dealt in chunks rather than you being able to do it all at once. Whereas before, as long as you're hitting a shard, you're dealing damage to the boss. But as we're going to see in a moment here, the boss works a little bit differently. Uh, and so before you have the boss unlocked, this isn't actually a loading zone. You'll just end up in here, but uh, it'll just be it'll just be on the map, right? And so right here, we're going to start the boss, and we're going to kind of see him in the middle. He's going to grab this guy, and we're going to begin. So this boss has three sections like most other bosses. However, unlike the other two bosses that we've encountered, these bosses aren't all on one body. Uh, so we have, in the middle here, we have a large shard, and this is the boss's actual health bar. This is the only one that actually matters to killing the boss itself, but it's also shielded from us at the beginning. And then we're gonna have two here. I'm just gonna say um, gun and melee, right? Uh, just gonna call them gun and melee, right? Uh, gun shoots a gun at me. Melee is gonna try and tackle me. And so basically, I want... Actually, I'm going to say gun and tackle. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, tackle is going to tackle me here, right? So I want to hit tackle because gun is going to try and avoid me during the first phase. And the reason I'm paused here is because it's... The way that they move makes it very difficult to, to just let them get away with stuff at the beginning, right? Uh, so right here, I'm actually going to get away from tackle here because it looks like he's kind of going to hit me soon. Yep. Uh, and usually, uh, tackle usually is pretty stagnant or vaguely moves towards you. I actually do way too much damage right now. Um, or vaguely moves towards you. And, um, the way usually that you can tell that tackle is about to actually tackle is because, uh, it'll start kind of moving away a little bit. It'll sort of start to drift away as it's going to hit you. And right here, uh, similar to pre-hitting bosses, actually, I like to hit the shield in the middle right after I've, uh, uh, right after I've hit one of the caps, which, um, right, okay. Uh, so af af after I break one of their shards, uh, the shield in the middle will go down and the other one will be enraged. Um, and so when this happens, I can hit the middle shard, I can finally deal damage to the normal boss, and this is the damage that's capped. Uh, I believe it's not fully capped in the sense that I can't go over the limit, but if I, um, if I hit a certain health threshold, then I won't be able to deal any more hits. So it is possible for me to uh, go a little bit over the threshold, but not by much, only by whatever the last hit ideal is. Uh, and, okay. Uh, after hitting a certain threshold actually right there, which I failed to account for, um, the uh, tackle will actually tackle twice after a certain threshold, and I believe gun will also shoot more, but it's less noticeable. Uh, so in the second phase here, uh, it's going to start shooting projectiles towards the top left. Uh, you want to stand on this platform. Uh, you really can stand on the other side as well. I just prefer to stand on this side. And you're going to wait for all these projectiles to come towards you, and you're going to stand off to the side, and you're going to 
smash right through them. Pay attention to your shield. Make sure that you don't completely waste it because you will be actually tanking a few of them rather than actually hitting them with your attack instead. Uh, but you want to try uh, to be tanking as few of them as possible and just make sure that you don't exhaust your shield there. And then we're going to be starting to hit Gun in this phase because Gun will be a bit more stagnant and the crystal in the middle will start to move, which will also move uh, a little bit more similarly to Gun, which will allow us to sort of hit this. Uh, so what we want to do when um, when Tackle's enraged here is just kind of wait until it gets close and just dash through it. It's really... It's a lot easier to dodge than... Oh. Uh, it's a lot easier to dodge uh, than Gun, in a sense, because it's very... It's very single target dodging, whereas with Gun, we're more so dodging a whole volley, and we don't really have tools designed for that. I am going to stand here for a moment, and I'm going to die. Oh, no. That would be great. <laughs> that's unfortunate. See, that's exactly uh, what uh, that's exactly what can happen in Ravelry. Uh, what you would hope for is to uh, get a four cycle there. Um, there usually will end up with five because the cap, I believe the cap is something like 22% health or something like that. I think it's a bit more than that, maybe like 24% health even. Uh, it could be, yeah, it could be just about that. In fact, I should probably take a group growth instead. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, it might be around 24% health that the cap is at. And with that, uh, what it means is that if you don't deal much damage over the cap, then what will happen is it'll be left with about 4% health at the end, and you'll have a lot of projectiles on screen, and it'll get very overwhelming very quickly, uh, particularly to your shield. Um, and something in that fight, uh, and it's a lot of the reason why I say that building defensively isn't really going to help you as much as, as it does on paper, is actually because in this fight, um, is actually because in this fight, uh, your your shield will get chipped away, and it won't really matter very much if you play defensively. You need to play hard in order, in order to kill the boss here. Which I think I I think I let um, explaining take a little bit over a uh, bit there too much. So I think I played a little bit slow, more slowly there than I should have. But I think that's perfectly fine for the learning experience that the projectiles will get very overwhelming very quickly. What we want to do is we want to try... Oh, I completely fell that. Uh, what we want to do is just just wail on this crystal in the middle, right? We just want to uh, kill Salvation in the first phase because... Uh, or wait, sorry. We want to kill Tackle in the first phase because Tackle is just going to just gonna wail on us and... Or Tackle's going to actually stay near us and his attack will actually bring, us, bring him near us. Whereas Gun will try to leave us a lot more. Uh, which just makes it a lot better to which just makes it a lot easier to it, it makes it a lot easier to get close to somebody who wants to be close to you rather than to try and get to get close to somebody who's getting away uh and so we we're just gonna okay yeah right here we're a lot uh further away from the, the mid health threshold and right here tackle's gonna tackle twice and that double tackle can be a little bit seating but it's actually very useful if you use it properly which i am not at all um, okay, yeah, so right here, again, we want to come up to the corner and we want to try and get rid of as many of these projectiles as possible. So I was saying it gets very overwhelming with all the projectiles, and especially at the beginning here because it releases a lot at once. It'll periodically release more of these purple bullets, but at the start, it'll release a lot of them, and that can be very difficult to deal with very quickly. Uh, at least if you don't get rid of some of them at the start like that. Uh, so right here, especially if you have a lot of damage like this, you'll just kind of be able to, to melt... Um, melt the small shards so that you can just wail on the big shard, mostly. And as before, you can hit the shield to grant finisher charges. Even if you're not dealing damage, you're still getting charges. And we just want to wait as long as possible for dashing here. And this is actually the point where, um, this is why I grab the fourth energy. Uh, this is why I grab the fourth energy. Oh yeah, see right there, I'm He's very low on health again, and the reason why he gets so low and why it's not consistent is because it depends on how much damage I've done that's been over the cap. Which sometimes you'll get very lucky and you'll get to deal a ton of damage in the first phase. Oh no! Okay, that's actually tragic. But uh, hey, that'll happen sometimes. And that's... Rivalry can be a big block early. Rivalry can be a very big block when you're first learning the game. Uh, just because rivalry will will kind of beat you down like that, and it's very easy to get greedy during the fight, which is 
admittedly what I did there. I got greedy for that last hit there. I went directly in, um, into the gunfire instead of taking just maybe a step back for just a moment. And obviously you want to go fast, so you do want to, to try and greed as much as you can. Uh, like, as much as you can get away with works, right? Because anything you get away with, now you have that speed, now you can move on to the next section with that momentum. And it's very easy to get walled out by rivalry. And I think one thing that helps a lot with that is practicing rivalry uh, a bit before, like rivalry specifically. And especially one thing is not practicing rivalry with your perks on. Uh, because perks are RNG, sometimes you'll have them, sometimes you won't. Right here, I have honestly a pretty lucky set of perks. It's really a shame that I'm dying to rivalry right now. But despite having, um, but despite having those perks, in a run where I don't have those perks, I need to still be able to deal with rivalry. Now, yes, usually a run with a uh, better perk set will be able to be faster than a run without one, uh, but you should, uh, it is still very important to just get used to fighting without them so that you don't have to rely on the huge damage or potentially the massive defense that you've got uh, rather than just being able to fight the boss for what it is. Uh, there is actually uh, something being investigated a little bit right now, um, which is a way to actually softlock uh, one of the twins here during the fight. And that is actually... Okay, okay, that... Okay, this one could actually be quite lucky. It, it kind of depends still. But uh, since, since right here at the top, you can see it's further than the middle, uh, that generally means, especially since that was only the second cycle, that means I did a lot of damage over the cap which actually might be enough uh, to where I won't have to deal with a fifth phase, which would actually be quite nice to see. Uh, but usually the fifth phase is the, the main one that causes trouble. Usually there isn't too much trouble for that fifth phase because the other phases can usually be dealt with m quickly enough that it's not too bad. And right here, if you can get on the ground here, definitely use that because getting on the ground actually gives you your roll instead of your air dash, which does have a lot more iframes. You should really be able to manage off of the air dash, but it is still easier to deal with if you have your full roll. So right here, if I'm lucky enough here, I should actually be able to kill this in this cycle, but if I don't, I think I'll be fine anyway. Okay. Yeah, so right there, I didn't actually manage to kill it in that cycle. That's a bit unfortunate. Uh, but right here, should be able to knock him out one last time, and there we are. And so we're going to be grabbing our perks here and moving on. So we actually have Life Absorb 3, which is going to be very helpful for that last section. Ooh, and that Assassin 2. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, just RTS. Just managed to skip the cutscene there, right? Not any sort of difficult cutscene skip, but just you don't want to wait for that. Really just grab the perks. The rest of it is mostly secondary. Uh, so something that you can do for safety, but at this point I think safety is kind of out the window. Um... Something you can do for safety is you can, um... Oh, actually, I want... I want to do this. Something you can do for safety is you can actually grab... Uh, what you can do for safety is you can actually burn the rest of your shards. Because right here, you'll notice I have two more shards. And that will give you a lot more XP, but it'll also take uh, a long time. It takes, like... I think it takes about, like, 25 seconds per burn or something. Uh, it takes a relatively long time to, uh... Uh, it just takes a relatively long time to burn those extra shards. And I actually want to put something in that last perk slot there. Uh, here, put that there. And so right here, uh, this last section is the best section to use Rebirth in. Because right here, we're towards the end of our XP, and we're not really going to be getting too much more. Especially not enough more to make a huge difference in our, um, in our stats, right? Uh, so in our stats, we're going to have... Uh, so a lot of the stats on the, the skill tree are flat. We'll have a few of those percent nodes, but most of them are flat scaling. And because of that, every time we get a node, every node that we get is a, a smaller percentage of our overall... Um, of our overall stats. And so later on, right, missing a node or two because we took rebirth for something is not really going to mean as much. Whereas at the beginning, that could be devastating. Not being able to get like the luck percent note at the beginning if you manage to have a really small amount of shards there. 
or something like that can be absolutely terrifying in the context of a larger run. But luckily towards the end here, right, we really just, we, we have everything we need. If we need anything more past this point, we're kind of out of luck. And so these horde rooms are, these horde rooms really don't have too much to them aside from the standard, uh, the standard horde room stuff. Um, there is a little bit of target priority. I would say generally the biggest enemy in the room is nice to focus on, except for in the second room, I would say the cultists are good to focus on, uh, which will not be the biggest ones uh, in this version of the room. Uh, each one of these has two variants. Um, each one of these rooms has two variants for, um, uh, and they're related to the arena rooms that are in the regions, which we won't see, which we wouldn't see in a run. So these are, yeah, we wouldn't see these in a run usually, but we do kind of get to experience them because these are just uh, stronger versions of those. But since we're in the end game, they're really not too difficult. Uh, the last one is usually the only one that gets you. And that's because um, the last one is a 50-50 between a really good room and a really bad room. Uh, the last of the three, that is. And so in this one, you want to hit these cultists. Uh, they're pretty squishy, but they'll create uh, sort of magic attacks that are disjointed from them and whatnot, and they'll create walls. And that's much more annoying than the sort of just generic damage hitboxes that are put out by, um, that are put out by the other enemies. And so just out of the, each of these, uh, you can ground pound, it'll get you into the room a little bit faster, but it's not going to be too, too big a deal. And here we actually got the bad room here. So uh, the general reason that this is the bad room is because this room is vertical and most of our abilities are pretty horizontal. I mean, our cannon shoots horizontally. Our, well, we can move vertically. We can't hit very far vertically at all. And the enemies here have, are a bit more omnidirectional in their movement. Now, I think I'm actually strong enough here that it will not matter as much. Uh, however, usually uh, these sort of jellyfish looking medosas here are sort of the bane of your existence because they'll shoot these i'm actually just gonna let this one fire one it'll shoot this giant fire beam right here like this huge flamethrower that'll actually just destroy you if you let it hit you for too long uh luckily here i have rebirth anyway so i wouldn't be in too much danger either way uh but it is really it is, it is a shame when um when you get this room if you're not ahead and even here, I'm ahead because I was slow. I'm ahead because I died. It's not the sort of thing that... It's actually... That's actually an interesting thing to point out in runs, and actually probably a good thing to talk about here because there's not really too much to the horde fights as a whole, is that um, being slow in early sections of a run will make you stronger for later sections, which weirdly makes you less prepared for them. So it has a weird... It, it has... It makes um, speedrunning the game have a weird dynamic where you very much have to get good at speedrunning the game in order, if that makes sense. And I mean, that always naturally happens because you play the, the start more than the end. Also, right when the text, uh, right when he starts talking here, uh, you can RTS. Um, but, uh, right, right, right. Um, it makes, it gives it, you are always uh, learning the beginning faster than you're learning the end just because naturally, even though we would like to always say, oh yeah, play out every run till the end. Sometimes you just know, sometimes you just want to get out of a run. You just don't like, you just don't like what's happened already. You don't want to feel what's, you don't want to feel the rest of the run, even if it, even if it could be something great. And uh, I actually think that it's a good thing to go through full runs, even when they're bad sometimes. A, just to still get a taste of the later parts, but overall it will, the game does sort of force you to learn it in order just because of the fact that um, that falling behind often means you get stronger. Which does also mean that it can be, that it can feel better sometimes later parts of a run. And uh, it actually has a very weird interaction with your splits because sometimes your later better splits aren't attainable in a normal run, or at least not normally attainable in a run, just because it's as if you've grinded. It's as if you've grinded and then saying that that's the same thing as showing up there with speedrun strats or like speedrun stats where you have like really low stats. So for this fight right here, um, uh, the boss's main attack uh, is just a giant swipe across the screen. And uh, that 
is practically impossible to dodge. You can technically go to the very top left corner and dodge it, but that's not feasible, especially if you're trying to deal damage the whole time. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your you're going to want to use your invulnerability frames. You're going to want to use your rolls, your dashes in time for that. So for this first one, I like to stand on this platform. I like to wait for it to swing, swing, hit it right here, and then jump up and hit this shard. I kind of missed that, but the the, the points are still there generally. And just wail on this shard as much as you can. Uh, if you can get away with it, dashing twice in both directions is a nice way to dodge uh, that hit. Sometimes it'll hold its arm up and then swing down. And that's that's something you gotta watch out for. Usually the first one's the main one you have to watch out for. After that, you kind of get a little bit more used to it. And then here it'll summon these ghosts, which you can uh, dodge in the moment, but they're a lot more difficult too, and you don't really have the energy to consistently dodge them. So usually you kind of have to completely avoid their lane, uh, just because it's not... You don't have enough dashes to properly just sit out of their lane. Uh, for this laser attack, my usual strategy here is honestly mostly to to not care about the lasers. Avoiding them is definitely better than getting hit by them. Whoopsie. Uh, avoiding them is definitely getting better than getting hit by them. But I usually use the, the laser point um, as actually a good time to go in because while the lasers are being fired, uh, it won't summon ghosts which are usually a much bigger problem because they sort of... The ghosts kind of deny an area of the screen, and that's a lot worse than the lasers dealing sort of chip damage to you, especially when it's shields. And we're actually about to hit time here as soon as we lose control of Ash, And that should be right about... Three... No. I shouldn't have said three. I think it's going to be wrong. And while there were some hiccups on Rivalry, and I definitely would have rathered that not happen, I actually think it it can kind of illustrate how how much of a high point in difficulty Rivalry tends to be in runs. Because usually, I mean, actually, no, I wouldn't say usually in speedrunning the, the high point is the end. I'd say usually in a game, you expect the high point to be the end. But often, especially in a speedrun setting, sometimes a lot more of it is based around a completely different roadblock. And... For Sunder, that roadblock is rivalry often. And so often, a lot of getting better at the game is getting better at either fighting rivalry or getting strong enough to where you can fight rivalry uh, in as short a time as possible. And I think that's it, about it. Is there, like, any way to refight bosses once you've... Uh... Uh, yeah, all the bosses you can fight uh, after, uh, not after beating the game, after beating them. So, if, for instance, if I go back into this file, right, uh, I can, I mean, I can go back into there to refight that boss, but I could even go back to region one and I could go fight Dominion again. Uh, the okay. one problem with that is that because of the skill tree, it's a little bit inconvenient to to go back and fight a boss oh, after boss. you're done a run. Yeah. Um, because you're a lot stronger than you would be. So, for instance, if I go to fight Dominion here, what would probably happen is I'm probably going to do way too much damage to all of the shards just off the start. And while this may be, uh, well, this may be satisfying, it's not really going to help me very much to practice fighting Dominion. Luckily, most of the bosses that we want to practice fighting are towards the end, which does mean that this is mitigated a little bit. But that's also why I would suggest usually to just completely remove perks when practicing. A, because they're RNG anyway, and also because usually in a run you'll get at least something. So you'll actually be practicing something that's a little bit harder. And so for instance here, if I hit the minion here, right? Like that first hit, like that's already dead. That, that's never going to tell me how, how fighting Dominion is going to be like at the start of the game. That, that's yeah. it's just not very helpful. Yeah. And then uh, I would say Rivalry is probably decent. Uh, Rivalry is probably the best to fight while well overpowered compared to the other ones. Um, particularly if you're overpowered and damaged, not as much if you're overpowered with like defense and stuff. Uh, just because of the damage cap, a lot of the time you're still fighting a somewhat similar boss. It still won't be the same. You'll still be overpowered, but you'll still be you'll still be in the ballpark of what you're fighting normally. Because a lot of the, the issue with Rivalry is just avoiding its attacks in the time where you don't get to hit it, rather than with other bosses, whereas the entire time you get to hit it. For sure, yeah. 
Um, is there any other uh, maybe tips you have for people uh, who are just picking up the game? Uh, tips I have for people just picking up the game. Uh, first, I would say don't worry about uh, grinding the tutorial. It'll just become muscle memory and it won't matter ever. And I would also say definitely to pay attention to the map. I think I actually, I, I think I misstated this a bit earlier as well. I think it's better to pay attention to the map. You need to pay attention to the map, but you don't need to be looking at it. It's a weird sort of split attention. You need to be aware of what's on the map, but you don't want to put all of your focus on it or you'll start running into things in the room. Like you'll start running into bushes yeah. and stuff and that's just not going to really help you out. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think that decently covers 80%. Perfect. And uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, there is a Discord. Uh, they can come ask questions there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are a few people around uh, constantly able to answer some things. And yeah, that would be great if some people could come by and ask some questions. I would be absolutely willing to answer as many as you'd like. Perfect. Do you have anything else you'd like to uh, close out with before... Uh we uh, go to our break? Uh, no, no, I think I'm good. I think I think it's been a great night. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I think uh, you did a great job explaining all the mechanics and everything, uh, just kind of showing off the game and how to get into it, uh, all the different... Um, I was going to say tricks, but there's not too many tricks, I guess, but no, just like... There's actually a lot of tricks, yeah. It's a lot of, it's a, lot of a few tricks. Is, is how I see the game. It's a yeah, lot of it, keeping momentum and a lot of, uh, I guess, yeah, yeah, just a lot of keeping momentum mostly, and then reacting to uh, the layouts. But it's very, it's a bit difficult to to sort of get in the headset of it immediately, which is the one thing that I, I don't like about this environment is that uh, a lot of running the game is about reacting to the different randomly generated layouts, and here we get to see one. And that's always what's going to happen. You can't show multiple layouts at once, obviously. But yeah. it's it's a lot uh, it's a lot more difficult to to sort of get some of the major points of running the game across when um, when what you get to see is a little bit different from what you're running. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it's hard to kind of because in a lot of other speed games well you can at the end of the day you can just boil it down to i'm just gonna copy everything that i'm seeing uh and yeah. then I'll, you can I'll sort get of eventually of get it down to just like a script just like pure muscle memory and yeah well i well i enjoy doing that as well with speed games i do think it is interesting to have a case like this it's a reason that i actually also really like minecraft as a speed game where it's it's something where you have to react to the game even though yes there's there's certain things you're doing and there's a direct there's a direct strategy to hit uh to hit success you you are still reacting to what the game world is throwing at you and i think yeah. that's i think that's something nice it's a lot of having the building blocks you, like having the core mechanics having the knowledge of the run and then putting all of that into practice in whatever the game throws at you basically yeah I'd almost say it's uh, kind of like having a test where the numbers are randomized. If you know how to, if you know how to use your formulas, you're going to be able to to do well on the test either way. Uh, but you're not going to be able to do. But if you do it over again with different numbers, it's it's going to feel a bit different. You're not just going to be able to do the exact same thing. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. All uh, right. Well, thank you for having me, and have a great yeah. night. Thank you so much for uh, showing up and help, or, you know, teaching the game. Uh, I did really enjoy it. Uh, we are going to take a quick break while we get ready with our next run. Uh, just before the break, I'd like uh, just to remind everybody, uh, if you've missed out on any of our Hotfix shows, uh, you can check out our archive of past runs and shows over at youtube.com slash games done quick. And if you're over on YouTube watching, you can uh, feel free to join us over at twitch.tv slash games done quick. You can check out our shows live. Uh, they start most nights at about 7 p.m. Eastern. And while you're here on Twitch, uh, Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. So if you could please consider supporting or subscribing to help support uh, future broadcasts, it does really help. Uh, and uh, we do have another run coming up, so we're going to take a quick break. Uh, 
you want to just you know get up stretch get some water stuff like that uh we'll be back in a few minutes with spirit fair hello everyone and welcome back to the gdq hotfix this is how to train a speedrunner and we are uh going to be learning spirit fair right now and we're joined by wallentia yeah, how are you doing tonight i'm doing good uh do you uh, have go ahead oh. sorry i wasn't gonna that was just okay you. <laughs> Do you have anything, uh, anything you want to talk or say about the game? Anything you want to talk about before we jump into it? Uh, no, it's a really nice, relaxing game. Uh, I have a lot of fun playing it. Uh, it's definitely not going to be quite as crazy as the last one. I was watching that, and yeah, there was a lot going it was all on over the, the place. Game, yeah. This one's going to be a bit more uh, slowed down. Okay, bit of an easier time. Well, whenever you're yeah. ready. All right. Uh, we'll get started, I guess, in three, two, one. All right. First thing I'm going to be doing is pressing the pause and then down and uh, confirm to skip this first intro and jump straight into the boat. I'm going to go up this building. And when we drop down to, we want to make sure that we talk this way. Don't be dropping like talking like this. Otherwise, I'll show you. You'll get this whole thing where you're just waiting for a few seconds before. When if you do it uh, correctly, standing, looking, it's instant. And then it's mostly just mash text. Best part of the run. This is the boat we will be on for most of the run. And this right here is Gwen, who is the focus of this run. We're going to jump off the roof, get a bit of extra speed. Our whole goal here is to finish Gwen's story as fast as possible. That's why the category is called Gwen Percent. And that's going to take us about an hour. We got a hug. Well, tutorial and hugging. Uh, and then we just have to sort of wait for one to walk right over here. Because she's going to give us the key to boat so that we can actually get moving. Our first goal is to be, that's not where we're going, but just get the boat moving as quickly as possible and then go back in and set the proper course. Mm. We'll talk to Gwen again. Just let her get through her mm. story dialogue. And then we go fishing. We can pull up two things here, a boot or a fish, and boots are worthless, so we don't want to get them. Luckily, early fishing is just pick it up, and once you snag something, you just reel constantly. Uh, later on on the run, we'll get it uh, our fish, our fishing station upgraded, so we can catch things other than boots and uh, herrings. But we're not really going to make use of that, except for once. But right now, we want to catch fish so that we can sell them for money. I'm getting good luck. We haven't picked up any boots. There is the boot. I've had runs where I've picked up only fish, and sometimes I'll just get boots. Do you know what the, uh... I don't need to get... Go ahead. What the, uh, what? Oh, sorry, I, I was gonna let you finish before I asked my question. Oh, uh, well, go ahead. What was okay, your question? Okay, uh, do you know what the percentage of, like, shoe versus, uh, fish is? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Uh, I believe, uh, I don't, it's not been, like, figured out because really once you pass the point where you get this upgraded, that's when people actually figure things out, but okay, yeah, fish are definitely fair. more common. 
hope we want to make sure because if one more fishing that pole right there is not seeable pet the cat is always important but uh that's sort of an early warning but if you're fishing it just doesn't show up we're not going to talk to gwen we don't need to but here is albert this dude this is the dude that upgrades our boat right now we're just here to get a uh blueprint table from him Talk to him one more time, and then back to the boat. And then our first goal is to head for this jellyfish right here. Talk to Gwen again so that she can tell us to get rid of the trash, and then we have to get rid of the trash, and then we have to talk to her again just so she can tell us to build things. We can't build things until after she tells us to, which is kind of confusing, but I'm gonna move this all the way to the side and then up, one, two, three, and then we're gonna fish. While Gwen walks all the way over there. Wheel it in. Got a fish. Now we're gonna jump up here. And talk to Gwen. So, right now she wants food, and to do that we have to build a kitchen because she won't eat raw fish. Uh, but to build a kitchen, we have to get glow jelly, which she's kind of afraid of. So, that's what we're heading to get right now, and then she's gonna hide inside while we actually do the work. So normally here we will get just two. We used to get four, but we rerouted some things, so it'll be faster. But we're gonna get all four here anyways, just because there is a chance of missing them later on in the run. And if you miss them, then you just don't have enough to finish it. So I'm just gonna get all of them to be sure. Uh, the yellow jellyfish will give us money and the green ones give us uh, the actual useful thing we want. But now we've got, uh, we've grabbed two of them, which gives us, uh, and each of the glow jelly give us two. So we got four. In total for this run, we need to pick up uh, eight different jelly for 16, right? Uh, and we'll get, normally we get two here, uh, four later, and then uh, another two in a final one. But we're going with the old routing of grabbing four here just to be safe. Because we cannot afford to uh, reset today. <laughs> Grab as many of those as possible. All right, then we're gonna save and quit. You have to make sure you don't do that too quickly after grabbing it because you can lose it uh, if you do. Come back in here, set your course for 78-130. It'll set us to the next island we're heading to. Uh, we're gonna move this down to the ground and we're gonna build a kitchen. Two, three, four, five up from the ground. I'm gonna talk to Gwen and she's gonna give us three corn so that we can turn it into popcorn. For the kitchen. Daffodil is teleporting inside. Yep, three popcorn, and then we're gonna put one, two, three, four fish, not five, but four. And then we're gonna give Gwen a single popcorn that she somehow turns into cake. That's Magic. A, that's an interesting skill to have. <laughs> yeah, uh, all of the NPCs that you take will have one food that they are shown as eating. One guy drinks tea, another one... I can't even remember what a tool eats, but for Gwen, it's eating a piece of cake, and... who knows how she does... how any of them do. Transforming things into other foods. 
some some sort of voodoo. Well, so this is the same devs. You can see we're getting close here. All right, we're here. That cat is always important, mm -hmm. and we've lost time. <laughs> it's always important. You want to make sure you get in the boat before uh, it completely fades out, because it allows you to partially skip it. If you wait too long, you won't be able to move, and you'll be forced to watch through that whole screen. We don't need to talk to Gwen quite yet. Uh, after we cut this tree, it'll switch her uh, dialogue to something else. Uh, we'll see it right here. We get this tree, it switches, but we don't talk to her. We have to talk to her with that dialogue, but we don't have to do it on this island. Which it, we're gonna take advantage of that by just running straight past her, and then when we get to the next island, then we'll talk to her. Cut down two trees on this island. We're gonna jump across. Then we're gonna get this deposit. You wanna get as close as you can with that, because I'll show you. If you go too far, it drops, and then you're stuck in this whole animation, which takes forever. So you don't wanna do that. And we're gonna quit. We got seven, so that means we need to buy four limestone. Oh, I think I just opened up the... Oh, you know, I opened up the right one. I'm dumb. We don't need to... T I thought I had opened up the wrong thing. Because I hadn't deleted the old save uh, for the other. We'll be in here. And then now we're going to go to x equals 5, and then 117 for our next island. I'm going to build the fields. But we can't grow anything yet, because we don't have any seeds. Actually, that's what Gwim is telling us. So she's telling us to go to Hummingburg. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to go to this next island, pick up a guy named Atul for a boat, and then we're going to go. For now, we're going to pick up... We've also got this medium glen bottle. It's very useful. We have five fish. I went to the settings. And now we just sort of wait. We got the, all the fish we need. We're just waiting for the fish in here to stop. I'm not even going to go near that stove right now. Because before I have uh, managed to pull the fish out too early. And oh, then no. that's just... You can't buy the limestone. There is a backup, but it takes extra time. But yeah, like if I come in, like, just wait. I have pulled it out, like, instance too early. And then if you pull it out early, then just, they're just not cooked in any way. Oh, no. That one second is the difference between having fully cooked food and absolutely nothing. And cooking them will about double the amount they're worth, so it's very useful. It seems like there's yeah. a, a lot of downtime uh, in in the run. Yeah. Uh, well, before we uh, would buy limestone, uh, this entire start of the run was just nothing but downtime. As we waited to get to places, there would be no fishing at all. Uh, oh, wow. That'll pick. That'll we'll, we'll run out of downtime once we actually have like the field to grow stuff and all the different things to grab. But right here, uh, we just can't get a lot of the stuff. Like, uh, if this were later in the run, we be, could be growing things and playing music to make it grow faster. Is there a speed difference between console and PC? There is. PC is much faster because of the load times. Uh, earlier you saw I saved and quit out of an island. Uh, if you do it on console, it's just gonna take absolutely forever for those load times. And you lose so much time. But now we are at Brokenshine or we're going to pick up a tool. And here is where we talk to Gwen. We have to talk to her, but... just not at the last island. I'm going to cut down... Normally with the routing, we cut down two trees, because this whole game is about just getting the bare minimum amount of stuff you need. But we're going to pick up all the trees here. 
just to make sure we don't run out. Because if you roll bad on all the trees and pick up the lowest amount of logs you can, you can't actually run out. We haven't done that, but if you mess up on cutting them down, you can also... Oh, I canceled. That's not good. Another thing, when you're in these animations, don't jump or press anything except the very specific buttons it wants you to. Because otherwise... We're gonna go here in the water, we're going to press down in space, and we're gonna dive and pick up a lemon. But it's not a real lemon, so this guy's sad because he can't get make lemonade, and so he's gonna come on our boat so we can actually get food. Save quit there. You gotta be very careful with this boat, because if you get too close, you talk to a tool, and that wastes time, so you wanna get right here. Any percent is a lot longer than Gwen percent. I will say that any percent is, I think the record is about five hours right now. I've only ever done it at six. Well, Gwen percent is, I believe, at a 5250. Nobody wants to run any percent because of that. It just takes so long. Now, Tool's super excited because, yeah, any percent's really long. I think there's yeah. two people that have times on the leaderboard. Do, does it also have, a, like, a lot of downtime, or is it all action? Uh, it'll have... So, because the start of the run is where all the downtime is, and any percent, since it's a lot longer, there's a lot more time of just constantly doing stuff. Okay. Uh, once you get past the first start, it's... There's absolutely no time for anything whatsoever. Gotcha. Oh, I need to fish here. But so he just upgraded this. And so we need to fish up. Why does Gwen percent not count as any percent? So Gwen percent, the whole goal is to... Oh, wait, we had fishing rod. We're going to let go. All right, now we're in the lightning area. But uh, Gwen percent is just about finishing Gwen's storyline, while any percent is about finishing the game. So, 1% is a lot shorter. Right now we're going into lightning. Uh, they have changed a bit how the lightning behaves, because so, so we want to be standing here during it. So that it'll only spawn below or above us, typically. Sometimes it'll spawn here. It used to be you'd stand here, and it would just always be on here. We got four. Daffodil just picked up one. Six. Seven. Eight. Now right here, we're gonna go into the thing, and this happens. I don't know why it happens, but specifically after lightning, we sit here for a good chunk of time, just letting the game figure out how to load. And now we're back in. That's so weird. Yeah, I d don't know why it happens. Sometimes it'll happen randomly, but uh, in different loads, but it's never as long as that, and you never get that just blinding can't see anything. All right, build the garden. We can't grow anything there either. And now we have all the fish we need. We'll have this old carpet that we'll sell later. We have an extra fish and squid that we don't need. But right now we're coming up on Hummingburg, and once we get there, after we're finished with that, there's pretty much no downtime left. You say goodbye to Elena in any percent. Uh, I'm trying to remember who Elena is. I think it's the... I think I know who Elena is, and I know. Uh, any percent is just about getting yourself through the effort door, finishing your story. So Elena being a late game extra character, doesn't matter. This guy right here that's just passing is really annoying because uh, when you finish Gwen's dialogue, sometimes he'll be in the perfect position for you to talk to him instead of clicking on this. But this is what gives us double jump, which is very important. That's why we went to Brokenshine first because Going there gave us the materials we needed to upgrade. 
when otherwise we would have had to go here and then to Birkenshine and then here again. All right, we're gonna buy things from him, but right now, look at these prices. It's ridiculous. So we get Gwen to yell at him. And that's what he calls him a trash panda. Went on a scam. Just screams at him and is like, yeah, okay, I'll make actual prices. And then this dude just comes and is like, hey, come up here. It's really cool because the ladder's broken. So it's like an exclusive club. Don't know why, but we're gonna sell off everything except for one of the pots one that we need. And then we're gonna buy, typically it's just four lemon and seeds, a carrot, and uh, four limestone. I'm gonna grab a couple extra lemon and seeds right now. Oh. I missed the ladder. And this guy's, hey, really cool, he's gonna say, but we're just gonna ignore him. Oh, we didn't do that right. We got that bit of time. This is Summer. We're gonna take, get use of her later for a bit of a time skip. Yeah, that camera might be shaking a bit. It's not in the most stable position right now. All right, gonna run up. Let's see her transform into a giant snake. And then we're gonna go to sleep because we can't move when it's nighttime. And now we have basically no downtime for the rest of the run. We're gonna be constantly doing things. First off, we're gonna do something called bus stop, uh, early bus stop. That's, we don't really have a proper name for it, but that's just what I say it is. We ring this bell, we jump up here, we plant a single carrot. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna plant two linen. Water this. Water this. So they grow faster. Talk to Gwen real quick. And we're gonna talk to Summer. Tells us that, hey, we should plant things. And then she realized we's, we've already planted things. So we go through this and then we come in here and we play a little song. Is this makes the plants grow faster. Checks out. That's we're gonna leave that. Same in real life, right? All right. We want to make sure the boat stops here before we set up for the bus stop skip. But we're gonna come down to negative seventy uh, to thirty. About there. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, because so this is where the bus stop that typically is the one you first go to that activates all of them. But by setting it there, the game just thinks we're there, so it activates all of the bus stops. <laughs> and we can uh, teleport early. Yes, we're at a bus stop and then our location set is at a bus stop, so we must be at the right bus stop. We're gonna go here and get our second upgrade. Talk to Summer real quick so she can give us a little coin. And now Gwen is down here asking us to build her a house. She doesn't like living in the guest house. So we're gonna oblige. Is her house. This is great, I'll let her say so. Now we're gonna ignore a tool here and instead talk to this dude, sell him a carpet, and then the tool is telling us that we should upgrade our boat, which we're gonna do. So we don't really need him to tell us to upgrade it. This guy's telling us that we need to build a mailbox because he's getting all our mail. We're not gonna do that. All right, we've got our first upgrade and we're gonna be heading, you wanna set your point about here-ish. 
Uh, we're not going to head straight where we want to go because uh, if you can see, I'll actually show it. This right here will slow us down immensely if we go through it. And we don't want that to happen. Let's sell this. We don't need it. Now Tool is telling us he wants a workshop. And we need a workshop for later, so we're going to build it eventually, but not quite yet. And then we go and then we play music for the plants. We need both of these to grow uh, as fast as possible. I'm gonna plant or play until the it starts raining out. And then we're gonna get out, we're gonna set the new fast travel point. And then Summer's also gonna tell us about a dragon that we need to go see. This little mini game right here can be quite annoying because it recognizes mouse movements as inputs. So if I were to like hit my desk and it were to shake a bit and my mouse were to move, uh, it would just fail three notes in a row. That sounds terrible. But it's not a fun time because you just sit there and you're just, it doesn't even take a lot. Sometimes you won't even realize it. And then, and just randomly say, oh, hey, guess what? You miss all three of these notes. Is there a penalty for missing a bunch of notes in a row, or it just takes longer? It just takes longer, okay. uh, since you're no, no longer... Uh, you know, you'll actually see it real here right quick when I play for here. You can notice right now the soil is sitting fine, but when I start playing, it starts moving. Gotcha. Now, if you mess up a note... Uh, the soil will stop, so it'll stop doing the fast growing until you finally hit a good note. Okay. Which sometimes it's not a big deal. Like if I were to miss that S, I have those two W's, but sometimes you have a lot longer of a gap. Like missing that between the W and the A there. there been any talk of categories other than Gwen and any percent? There's been talk of it, uh, about 100%, but there's so much arguing over what constitutes 100%. Uh, uh, yes. There's a progress bar in the game that comes up to 100%, but it doesn't actually constitute everything. So is that really 100%? But yeah, now we've grown all the linen. We're going to run right over here real quick. Set something up. I'm going to set that there, so that as soon as we finish with the dragon, we're immediately moving. Gonna run up here. I was talking about this dragon's in pain, we gotta help it. So we're gonna help it. By smashing it on the head with a pickaxe. Now, that to me, that doesn't sound like the dragon's being healed. It sounds like it's screaming in pain, but... <laughs> Because we're smacking it on the head. Yeah, you don't need to use those to get where you need to go. Is it better on keyboard or controller? I play on keyboard because uh, it's probably better on keyboard. Specifically just for setting your locations. Uh, when you're doing the map, if you're on controller, uh, you just have to let the... Uh, you can only go as fast as the controller moves it, but when you're using a mouse, you can just zip instantly. All right, that's the dragon done. Wait. There we go. Hey, we helped the dragon feel better. I wouldn't feel better if I'd been repeatedly smashed in the head with a pickaxe, but what do I know? Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good time to me. That sounds miserable. All right, we're going to come in here. I'm going to load this up with linen and start, but we're not going to. I'm going to press escape and then talk to Gwen. Sp 
specifically because she's gonna give us three more. Uh, that's one of the linen that we got rid of. You know, notice I said we get six now, but we used to get, uh, we get four now, but we used to get six. That's how we moved it to five. And then later on, there's another way that we managed to get rid of another three that we have to grow. Does good job. You grew the thing. I want to be quick about that because as soon as we get to this jelly here, we need to have this workshop right up here built so that we can actually reach the jelly. It's down here. Oh, I fell. Start the jellyfish. All right, we got those two jellyfish instantly. That's actually not good, because it means we're on the slower cycle. As well, these first two come quick. The next two take a while. Yes, that one up there is too high for us to reach. Let's see, we're jumping up. Three are going to go by. We're not going to be able to get any of them. No, only two this time. There... All this dead time. There's the third, and then here's the one we can get. Are there a lot of different seeds for this, or, or sorry, I guess not. Seeds, as far but... as I've been able to, I've seen there's only two. Okay. But this is the slower one. I don't know how we switch between the two. I'm pretty sure it's just uh, completely random. There's three. Three more we can't get. Watch them all go by. Or we won't watch them because we can't even see them. We can watch the little boxes up here just shoot past. There's the last one that we grab. Come on. Now, right now we have all the jellyfish we need. Uh, we've gotten eight, we got four at the start, four at the end. But the new routing has us grab two at the start and two at this next location I'm gonna head to, just as a show off of what we do. You know, the actual routing. We have to, we always fail that log, but by going up to the top there, uh, it'll insta-fail it instead of having us cut through the whole thing. And now our thing is fixed. We can cut these logs properly. Notice before there wasn't a line through it. Now, I don't know any logging places that cut logs like this. This seems rather inefficient, but what do I know? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I can't say that this is the most efficient way but yeah here we need to get at least 12 which we've just done uh you can miss typically you get four if you mess up a bit you'll get three or even two so you get basically two chances to mess up he's telling us to build him a house uh we're not gonna do that we're just not gonna build him a house Uh, and then we're going to rebuild the loom right here. We're also going to rebuild the field right here. Now coming up here, as this is discovered... Oh, we might have actually skipped. All right, it looks like we might have skipped it. I'm still not sure, but this location has a bit of a thing where as you come into like the area of it, it'll slow down the ship and say you've discovered the location. Which is really annoying, because it just wastes time. Mm. Come out, we have another set of jellyfish here. Mm. Now, fortunately, the jellyfish we get here are usually, I will say usually, down low. 
There's the first one. Uh, but there's two more that are way up high, which is why we d didn't use it before. But luckily, these first two are really down low, and the next two are super high up, and you can't ever reach them. Until you get a lot more upgrades on your ship. You can see the first one up there. But the reasoning for moving it from uh, just doing the jelly twice to doing, to doing the jelly uh, three separate times, two, four, and two instead of four and four, is because of this right here. Stella, or Gwen is telling us about uh, her house from when she was a kid that somehow exists here in the world of everybody is dead. Doesn't make sense, and she says it doesn't, but... Uh, we cannot progress her storyline until she specifically tells us, hey, by the way, my house is near here. I'll plant these real quick. Uh, so it used to be we'd get here and then we'd just sit around for a few minutes waiting for Gwen to say something. But by shifting things around a bit, we get rid of that dead time. All right, we go through this door down here. Run all the way over to here and talk to Gwen. Mm -hmm. So we gotta go through her house to this whole labyrinth to grab a music box that's up at the top floor. It's really simple to get through. You just sort of follow the uh, lights go up as you get to different floors. Be careful, because if you jump up here, you will land on another floor that's completely worthless. You went all the way over here, come out this door. You talk to this dude, he just, he asked you how the, how did you get here? What in the world? But we give her this box right here. But the other thing we got here is an upgrade for our uh, loom, which is very useful. I run over here, because it's, it honestly takes about the same time as... Now we're gonna talk to Gwen here, because by the time we get to the thing and start us moving, uh, it'll be nighttime and then we'll be kicked out. Prove the loom. And it's nighttime. And we're gonna sleep again. Yeah, we open this up. Got another bus stop here, but we won't be able to use it. Uh, we're gonna set this for negative 99, uh, 34. Oh. There we go. I'm gonna run in here. Oh, we forgot to wake everybody up. Don't forget to hit the bell. What gets everybody out of their houses. I'm gonna take all of these and upgrade them into the super nice. Now, I've done this well over a hundred times, and I can never get this consistently perfect. Oh, we didn't get a single one perfect there. It's so much harder. The other one I can do every single time, but that specifically, just so hard to hit. Get those two going. Talk to Gwen. Nope. Mm. Mm. We want her to get through her storyline. Tool, when are you going to talk to us? Oh, this is kind of bad. Oh, there he is. I'm going to say, hey, sometimes I, I get a... Uh, Craving for popcorn. Give me some popcorn, so we're gonna give him some. Mm. And we give him popcorn, and now he's sad. Mm. And then he tells us to upgrade our kitchen. Our popcorn wasn't that bad. Well, he gets sad because it reminds him of uh, his kids and how he can't see his kids because he's dead. Uh-oh. We don't have enough linen fabric. 
That isn't good. That's why you have to get one of them perfect. And if you don't, then... You can't upgrade Gwen's house all the way. We're gonna try and grow this as fast as possible. How long is a full speed run of the game? Uh, record is just over five hours. It used to be a glitch in uh, the co-op version of the game where you could uh, basically instant grow things. Uh, and they patched it out. Which is kind of sad. Yeah, that is unfortunate. She's telling us she wants us to upgrade the house, which we're gonna do. See, they patched it out, but even after they did, I managed- I saw it once. So I don't know if it's really patched out. It Like, it's not patched out, but they patched out how you do it, and so it's very difficult to hit. But you can. Okay. Uh, it's just I have no clue how the new way of doing it is. All right, so we get this coming up. More important to talk to Gwen here, because we have to get through her storyline fast as possible. So I'll, you'll actually see here what happens when you don't get to that little raft fast enough. Oh, we're gonna actually get to it, just in time. All right, so we're gonna run in here real quick. What we're doing here is we're gonna grab some chests that we need for summer very soon here. And she asked us to build her a house, which we will do. Tool's the only one that doesn't get a house. We get Citrine there. Run into the mine. Up right here. Let me grab this chest, and then right above here, there's a little secret path that we can run up. And we're gonna ignore that chest. Hold right after you fall off. You end up in another secret area. Save, quit, reload, and you'll end up all the way back next to the boat. Ooh, perfect. I'm gonna show off a crate skip here. Uh, you'll notice we're about to go through some crates. That slows down the boat significantly when it happens, so you don't want it to happen. Uh, but I figured out a way to skip that. And here is how we get the other bit of fiber. Uh, Gwen, uh, you'll see here, she gives us some. You'll see her mood. Right here it says shops for fiber if she's above this middle bit here. And that's how we get the second round of fiber, is she so shops for it. Uh, here's trash skip. Uh, you'll see it. We're going through these, you notice the boat slows down, but you see this little crate right here? We wait for it to pass us here. And then we go into here. You notice it's gone from the map, and then boom. No more trash, no more slow. Oh, wow. Just helps us not have to spend forever waiting in it. This is the last bit of linen we need. We'll get it grown. You'll notice since we left Hummingburg, we have not had a time where we just sat and did nothing on the boat. It's always running between different things. Yeah, it's running back and forth from one thing to another, making sure that everything kind of were running properly. That's just sort of how you get this run, is that we just have brought every single thing down to the bare minimum amount we need to get. There's that. A little light pole. You can use it to help you know when you're about to. Uh, we come here to get a single tree. But here is also where we used to get some uh, limestone, and I'm going to show you that as a backup.
These are a different tree from what we were cutting down earlier, and we need them, so we're gonna cut down just one of them. But if you are, if you get seven limestone from that first node you do earlier, uh, and then you can only buy three, you just, once you get to this island, you run all the way down it. And you're gonna see exactly why we skipped that. You have to run all the way here. Oh. Come on, Lime. Come on. It ain't happy with me. There we go. And then we save quit. We drop down, get in the boat. That's Summer. She's asking us to build her a house, which is very important. Because after we do that, on this, we're gonna go back to this island. Uh, and she's going to show us how to meditate, and that's going to skip a whole bunch of time. Just a last bit of linen fiber. Gonna use it. Ding. See, I'm hitting all of these. It's a lot more forgiving on that first bit of doing the fibers than it is with the second upgrade. I'm gonna get rid of all of these. And we're gonna build summer. Oh, we're gonna build a workshop. I almost forgot that. And build the workshop again. And that's why we cut down the tree. We need to get these ma maple logs. And no, not the maple logs. We want the oak logs. Apologies. See, this one's a lot more windy. Three. We need 12, but uh, I messed up one of the logs, so I only got... Typically, you only need to do three. Okay. Build her a house. Perfect. Here's Gwen. She's telling us, hey, uh, I'm going to go in my house. I'm going to lock the door. Don't bother me. I don't want to talk to anybody for a while. And now she loves her house, but she wants uh, rocks. And that's why we got those gemstones earlier. I'm gonna give all of them to her. She's gonna run up here for some reason. And then we're gonna give her... Where is it? There we go. Citrine. That's not... Okay. Go over. I give her the opal. And then we give her the amethyst. Like, hey, this is really cool. And then we talk to her again. And says, hey, perfect. I have a house now. Oh, we should go meditate. And so we're gonna head and meditate. Home, we're gonna talk to her. Now watch this. She's here. We're gonna run. She's still there. We're gonna run all the way to the top of this mountain. Back into here. There we go. Through the door. And somehow she's here. Uh, yeah. Very fast, apparently. This is, oh, I, I, <laughs> really fast. So now we're just gonna meditate with her and skip the time a bit because we, if we don't do this, then we just have to wait for Gwen to decide she wants to disappear. We're trying to meditate, and she keeps talking. Took the hidden elevator? Yeah, it must be what it is. Mm -hmm. 
And now, that little once that little quest thing pops up, you can quit out and reload. And you have to talk to her here before you can go back to the boat. You got a vision of the dre of things, so but that vision's not going to come into play in any way, shape, or form. We're just going to go back to the boat. I'm going to sleep real quick, because we'd have to anyway. Now it's morning time again. We're going to head for this bus stop. This is the bus stop that we tricked the game into thinking we were at earlier. Now, Gwen's door is still locked. So she's still here, which uh, is typical. Uh, it's only after a certain amount of time that she'll disappear. The run, this run used to be just after we got her to go into her house, we just sit and wait. But uh, the all the windows open. She's apparently just standing behind this door. Uh, what this actually means is she's gone now. But, uh, because we're still on the boat, she doesn't have the time to disappear, so we have to actually head somewhere into an island before she'll actually, the door will unlock and she'll just be gone from the boat entirely. He's asking for pork chops. We're not gonna give him that. I'm gonna teleport right up here real quick. Now we're back in the part of the round where we actually have downtime again. As we slowly make our way up. There was a trick discovered recently actually that was, uh, it's called Night Warp that allows you to teleport uh, without the bus stops, literally anywhere. Uh, and it would be really useful, but we can't use it in Gwen percent at all. Because it's too expensive. You have to upgrade the boat before we have the ability to do it. Uh, okay. And we just don't have the resources that we grab along the way. So she's gone. Watch this. We're going to head to the island. She's not here. I'm gonna go back. And poof. She's gone. Where did she go? She went here. Are there still people that run 100%? Uh, there is not a 100% run uh, category at all. Uh, that's for any percent? No, nobody runs it. There's not a super large community, but she's apologizing. She ran away. And then we have to hug her. That's the second hug of the game. She says, I feel better. And now we're going to go back to the boat. And here we're coming up on the end here pretty soon. Gonna head for this bus stop right here. We are very intentional with where we placed her house. We want it to be as close to this boat right here as possible. Right now she's gonna run all the way up to the front of the boat. 100% is not a free record because it doesn't exist. There's just not a 100% category. All right, so now she said, hey, Let's go to the Everdoor. I'm ready to leave. Talk to this guy. We're gonna travel. It's 100% not possible due to in-game. It's not possible. We can, Nobody can agree on what 100% is. That's why there's not 100%. That's the last teleport of the game. I'm gonna head right up here. 
Now this place would be recognizable if we had not skipped the intro cutscene entirely. Because of that, uh, there is no recognizability to uh, this area. The water gets red. Not ready to start talking to her. Once we get to uh, there, now she's gonna come over here and talk. Tell her, yeah, we'll take you to the Everdoor. Gonna walk all the way over to this boat. I'm gonna talk here. And we're actually gonna leave without her. Watch this. Oh, we didn't manage to do it, but she just plops right down if you actually get to it before she can get in the boat. And just fall right off. That's hilarious. And now we're in the end game. Uh, this is basically a cutscene right at the end that we have to watch through. Because technically, you could save or lose time here uh, if you just don't go through this dialogue. Yeah. Is there a run where you do all the storylines? There's a run where you finish the main story of the game. Uh, I believe you have to send seven people through the Everdor, and then you can end the game. But that's the closest to... But yeah. We're saying goodbye to Gwen here, which is the entire point of this category. Let's see, we're just sort of sitting here. That was a a fairly chill run. There's... This is why I have this guy right here. He has candy in him. Totally Christmas decorations. Red the pumpkin head. There isn't We're still waiting. <laughs> seem to be a lot of like <laughs> difficult things in this run to pick up. It seems fairly straightforward. No. Yeah, it's really straightforward. It's just about making sure you uh, make perfect use of everything you get. You can see when I had to go with that extra piece of linen to upgrade Gwen's house. Yeah. That's why it took her so long to uh, say goodbye or say that she wanted to go into her house. Here's the time coming up. It's, it's going to be soon. Once the uh, constellation finishes uh, its last star. All right, she says goodbye, one last hug for the road. And then she raises up into the air after this. I do really like this bit, it's just kind of, but. It does take a while to get through that long boat ride. Poof, he's gone. Not quite as impressive as turning popcorn into cake, but still. It's close. All right. And time. Uh, yeah, that's the run. There's no need to do any of this, but I'm just sort of running around. We're sort of in like a dream here. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. We meet death if we go through this whole thing. But yeah, that's the run. I'm like piecing together memories. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like I was saying, this seems like pretty easy to pick up. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's, a, it's just about managing your resources and your time basically. Yeah. Um, I like to describe this game as uh, Stardew Valley, but you're going to cry when you play it. Uh, I, I actually I haven't the... played the game, but that, just from what I've seen, that sounds like a pretty apt description, yeah. Yeah, it has a lot of... Uh, they call it, I believe the devs call it a cozy game about death. Uh, but that also makes it really sad. Yeah because all of these people, because all of these people are dead and you're sort of taking care of them in the afterlife until mm -hmm. they're ready to finally move on. See pictures of Stella as a kid with family members that uh, we meet later in the game. 
that's death, or Hades, rather. Uh, one thing I do want to say is English is not the fastest way to go through this game. I played through it on English because it's a lot easier for people to understand. They can see the different text boxes. Yeah. But the fastest language is, I don't even know what it is, but you go here, you go left three times, and then apply. Whatever this is. Uh, just gets to those mashing text box that you have a lot faster. Good game for couch co-op? It is. There is uh, both uh, solo and co-op versions of this. Uh, right now the uh, Gwen% percent, uh, record is actually shorter on solo than it is co-op. Even though co-op is definitely faster, there's a couple of people that have been trying their best to get through it. Uh, and they've made a lot of progress. They're doing really well. But yeah, that's death. Basically tells us, yeah, we'll see, uh, I'll see you later. You're not ready yet. And everything blacks out, and then suddenly we're back on the boat. But yeah, that is 1%. Oops. Do you have anything else you want to uh, touch on uh, before we end here? Let me think. Is co-op safe? Oh, someone asked about co-op. Uh, the cat is faster than uh, Stella is at movement, so you can get two things a lot faster. Like, uh, Daffodil will go down this ladder faster and get in the boat, so it just saves little bits of time everywhere. And then you can also have two people focusing on things. You can have a person, two people doing the plants to grow them faster. You can have a person cutting wood and a person doing linen. Just all little bits of optimization that help out. And people saying it's Chinese, apparently, the language? I don't know. I just know it's faster than English. We haven't tested all of them, but it's faster here. Uh, I guess I should give some shout outs to different people. There is Shersenis. He did a lot of the, he's done a few of the route optimizations in here. Uh, let me think about some other people. We got our lovely moderator of the Point Crow. Uh, he's the moderator on the, on speedrun.com or the game. He point, accepts everything. What a beard on that man. Yes, he has a big beard. I'm jealous of your beard. I, I've been working on it for a while. It's been, uh... I, I can't, I can't grow anything. Oh god, what year are we? We're almost 2022. This is like an eight year beard, yeah. Dang. But yeah, that was Spirit Fair. And uh, you do have a Discord. Uh, it's, I believe it's the dev Discord, or, or like the actual game Discord, but you do have a speedrun uh, channel in there. It's not the like dev-made Discord, but it's the Discord for the game that like people have set. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the developers have their own Discord. Gotcha. But if anybody but has- Yeah, any... there's, that's where the speedrunner channel is. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions, they can jump in and ask them there. That's uh, grad camp. All right. Do you have any uh, any closing things you want to say or? Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, you know helping out tonight, showing off the game. It was a really interesting run. Uh, very uh, comfy, uh, especially after uh, Sundered, which was very. Uh, fast paced oh. and yeah, uh, like a, looks like a, a lot of fun too. Yeah, the, it, I, I, I haven't, I've actually played Sundered and the movement is really fun in that, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just nice to have go from the very chaotic speed run to the you know, this is a nice, comfy speed run that I can, you know, take, yeah, take a little bit of a break in. Like, I still have to do all of this stuff but it's not as fast-paced. Yeah. 
But yeah, thank you so much for uh, helping out, showing uh, the game off tonight. Uh, we, that is all we have for tonight. Uh, we are going to take a quick break while we find a raid target. Uh, if everybody can just uh, stay on or stay, stick around to help cheer on somebody uh, in their own speedruns. Uh, just before we, you go, though, uh, I do just want to remind everybody uh, that AGDQ 2022 online will be on January 9th to the 16th. And you can visit gamesnonquick.com for more information and uh, details on the event. And tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have a Shona Showdown in What's Faster. Uh, so it's going to be Frozen Flygon facing off against Conception S-Star. And again, that's 7 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you all have a great night.